(laughs) (laughs) Not that program. And on that note, we're going live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of Star Trek Nighthawk, where we investigate a Star Trek intelligence crew exploring unknown space. And I believe that we have a captain's log from our glorious captain. Yes, we do. Captain's log started 82563.4. With careful navigation, we have made our way to Vax, the home world of the Vatars. With the help of the ACS and skilled navigation, we've been able to avoid most patrols, but the challenge of remaining undetected has only increased. We spent about one week repairing sensors as best we could. However, it appears that only the facilities housed at the Starbase will return them to completely operational fidelity. Concerning the internals of the Imperium, our encounter with the holographic Vitars has revealed to us that the, Imper- the Imperator's name is Japilair the Final. I'm sure Vax will illuminate even more intelligence, and with it, a critical moment soon approaches. And Captain's log? Begin personal log. As we delve deeper into the new mysteries surrounding the Lasai Expanse, one thing remains clear to me. <laughs> this crew, my crew, is one of a kind. The nature of our mission and space exploration in general can be viewed as almost a Sisyphean task. As we brave it, we may learn more about ourselves as we search for the answers about others. And although personal setbacks may arise, their ability to adapt is one that I continue to value greatly. End log. Uh, splendid. Uh, so, you guys are on the outskirts of the Vax system, uh, homeworld of the Vatars. And it is a heavily militarized uh, area of space. Um, your active camouflage has served you well, but it's not likely to get th- to get your ship past all of the various uh, mo- long-range motion detectors, the literal armada of vessels patrolling the uh, system exter- exterior, and only getting more and more dense as you get closer into the planet itself. Hmm. And you are currently hiding around one of the Kuiper Belt objects that is large enough to block the uh, USS Nighthawk from most passing systems, and you're trusting your active camouflage systems to protect you from the rest. Um, Let's see what people are currently going to be doing. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, anything you'd like to be doing? Um... See, last time we were fishing up some letters to my sister. Uh, this time um, I'll be hanging out in the uh, in the in the ten forward lounge. All right. Heading out into the lounge. Anything in? Uh, anybody wish to join him in the lounge before the actual mission starts? Well, me and Toki can. Okay. <laughs> Captain Bashir, uh, or Commander Bashir, not Captain, that's a bit presumptuous. <sighs> so close. I mean, um... One day. One day. But not today. <laughs> okay. And the little Togalau, who, despite everything, just chooses to now stay at this size. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to get any larger at the moment. New, the bartender, who has been here all along, I swear. Uh, three-armed, I think they're called... Uh, I had their name and I've forgotten. They're not... Erodishin? Erodishin, thank you. Yeah. I was going to call them Erosians, but those are different things. Erosians, right, I think? Erosians, thank there you. you. There you go, there you go. He'll uh, wander over with uh, three glasses in his hand, in his hands. Give one to the commander, one to Cap- Commander Bashir... And he'll just pour a little bit on Togi. On Togi or in the pot? Little A, little B. Togi <laughs> seems perfectly fine either way. Yeah, we tried giving him a straw, but he'd drink it all at once, and it wasn't pretty. Um, gotcha. He looks up and just goes, this is not the first uh plant-based species I've had to serve. Don't drink 
Uh, do not drink what I'm giving him unless you want to gain the ability to photosynthesize. No problem. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. And with that, he will wander back. Hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the bar is, or the lounge is mostly empty right now. A lot of the peep, a lot of the um, officers are currently understanding that tomorrow is going to be a big day, and so they're getting their uh, shut eye or cramming as much extra science as possible. Captain, anything you're up to? Um, nothing in particular. I'd be just reviewing the mission logs uh, from when I was indisposed. Mm -hmm. And if there was any clarifying questions that I'd have, I'd most I'd call uh, Commander Bashir, and uh, for security matters, eventually uh, uh, Commander Helsing. All right. Uh, have you? Any insight on what to do with the holographic Vitaris pilot currently in the holodeck? At this point, since this was uh, taken up uh, while I was in this pose, I'm just going to give this matter to the first officer. All right. Okay. So have we actually got a lot of um, information from him or, you know, about... You know, making a first contact with these people. Uh, he's been fairly tight-lipped, and most of his intelligence is about ten years old, after, right? If and, not older than that. A missile. <laughs> yeah, you know, a, a being a being a living missile is a bit of a solitary ex experience. Um, he's not a lot of stuff. He just says that's classified, or things may have changed. All he is, all he is to tell you for sure is that the Imperator is, is named Japler the Final, and that they had taken up the mantle just as the Borg began to attack. Okay. But on well, that we... same, I'm my apologies. Go on. Go on. No, please go on. I was just going to say. On that same note, though, I still do wish to uh, be properly informed and debriefed. So yeah, I, I was just still... going to think the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I mean... me and Taki shouldn't... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> even, even though I do trust your, uh, your opinion, I still need to know exactly who we have going on in the holodeck. So let's go, Mina. Let's go ahead and meet Okay, we're going to go and meet them. We are going into the holodeck is here so the holodeck is has been changed by it's no longer the black and gold grid pattern instead as you walk in it is a, a mountainous scene uh, looking over long plains of uh, brown and kind of bleak really and in the far distance, there is a small ocean that is an actinic green color over a golden, or not a golden, over a, or all over this is a red sky. And you see this individual sort of just sitting on a rocking chair overlooking the view. Well, this is surely a picturesque sight. Yes. So... I turn to uh, uh, my first officer and just say, how far have you actually gotten with this individual? Some information. The Bionars were uh, allowed him to have control over this holodeck room to make himself more comfortable. He himself was a missile um, and uh, had been waiting for a Borg ship to explode. He impl imploded into our hall um with a duranium shielding is that right uh yeah duranium plating but yes yeah and uh it was a three-stage rocket um the bionars were able to pull his conscious out into a tricorder and i felt that the best way to communicate with him would be to Put him in here. He isn't. He can be transported into a body through their means, um, but I thought it might give us a first peek at what the what we're getting ourselves into. He can I... hear you, after all. Yeah. And he stands and 
gives a quick uh, double bang on one of his pectorals with his fist. You must be the captain. I am indeed. Thank you. I meant no. I meant no disrespect. And I, as I have stated to your commander, I do apologize for the misclassification of your vessel as Borg. It's very difficult for me to understand what or see anything in that nebula. I can understand how uh, sensor difficulties could, may lead to such a conclusion. It's not the first time, and it certainly happened to us. And he'll stand and once again cast his eyes back over the vista. This is where I was going to retire once I achieved my rank of crevet. Not upon the crevet. Yes. Yes, uh, lead, uh, leader of a starship. Or spaceship. Pro probably see. captain is your... De same as your captain, I suspect. I see. But forgive me, since I'm still being cut up to speak. You are a holographic or a photonic representation, correct? And you're telling me that you yourself or this you would be placed in command? He shrugs eventually. Once my once my consciousness is returned to the Eternity Research Group, I will be downloaded into a fresh new uh, uh, memory module and inserted into a clone of my former body. I, I took on a I took on duty that had great risk and did so with the promise of great rewards upon my return. Well, I mean, I certainly necessarily wouldn't be the first to say that I wouldn't want to keep you for any of that. But at the same time, I would like to know a lot, a little bit more about the Imperium. Do you have any idea, or do you have any other inroads possible for us to make proper first contact with your people? Of course. I can, I am more than willing to vouch for the peacefulness of your nature. Of your mission, Captain. I may be I may be a grot, and my security code's probably thirty years out of date, if not longer. But the mere fact that there is one of me on board your ship should be enough to prevent its in immediate destruction. Well, that's nice to know. I certainly do appreciate that. I know it's been a long time since you've ever been able to communicate with your people. So asking you to speculate may, necess may be out outside your purview. But do you honestly believe that if we had you in tow that they would treat us friendly or still be kind of skeptical? From what we gathered of the Vitaris Imperium, they possibly both serene and <laughs> giving us potential difficulty. We are a paranoid people and have been even before the Borg attacked. I I grew up before I came into being before the Immortality Project began and before the Borg attacked and even then we were chomping at the bit to expand our territory as far as we could see. Our goal was to our goal was to settle into the Blood Nebula. Uh, that, that was far that seemed far distant, even at the time we began reaching to the stars. Then the Borg poured out of it, and we had to come up with new methods of defense. But uh, we were we were warlike, and it's based on what I've been told. There's still a hint of aggression in our species, but I believe that we have other things to worry about at the moment. And he points to the uh, little Togalau thing that seems to be following Commander Bashir wherever it goes. Well, in that case, I'll just uh, look to Commander Bashir, and this is when you chime in. <laughs> uh, on on him or the to Togi? <laughs> Both. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pick up Togi, <laughs> and uh, as like, well, said to your people and their people, I point to Togi, have 
made a connection and uh he, he smirks so i'm told however it will take some time even for a full what were they the togalau to clean up all the systems that they had inadvertently infected but i look forward to the day where i am able to set foot on one of our regained colony worlds well, I'm certain that day will come soon. If there's anything else that you need to be attended, whether there's any other things of attendance that you need to be uh, taken care of, please, by no means, don't hesitate to, to ask either my, myself or the rest of my crew. Is it weird that I have not had the urge to eat or drink since materializing in this form? That is a question probably best left from our engineer. Possibly. You can actually... Have you tried? I have not. What is... What is something that is a delicacy on your world? And he pauses. On the home world? Uh, fresh, Correct. Fresh rainwater. I kind of tilt my head and, like, computer? And a glass... Rainwater. Of yeah. Uh, you know, 32 degrees Celsius and, you know, ice-cold rainwater. <laughs> it materializes in a glass. He picks it up and downs it. and Then he takes a small sip and then downs the glass in two large gulps. How was that? It was refreshing. Why was that refreshing? I have no body. But it was... Computer, how much water can you create on this holodeck? The, the holodeck can, sub, can simulate an entire subaquatic environment. Hmm. Not that much. Maybe a jug? And a full jug of water materializes. And he smiles as if he's just found like... He's found like the lost city of Atlantis. Or has discovered a way to control the Midas touch. Uh, sorry, Captain. Commander. It doesn't rain a lot on our planet. And the rainwater that is... That touches the ground becomes property of the Imperator. Well, upon this ship, you'll have you'll find that we have no such constraint, and this the uh, computer is completely able to replicate and synthesize or generate any amount of rainwater that you may desire. So, don't feel free to help yourself. He smiles again, and just continues to drink. You know, on that same note. Rainwater, main is this rainwater exactly isn't to your your liking or your knowledge or your memory or your specification. If you can, uh, if you wanted to give the geological and other climat uh, the climatological analysis of your home world, we might be able to generate rainwater in taste that may be, may be more accurate. I don't know much about the planet. I'm afraid I was. I, I'm a, uh, well, I've been in the military for most of my life and a missile for much of, for some of that. So I'm not one of your planet scientists. All I know is that the, uh, I remember the ox, I remember the air being nitrogen about 80%, oxygen about five and carbon dioxide would be the rest. But as yeah. pollutants and stuff, he shrugs. I'll, I'm happy with what I have. I'll be in a proper body soon. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Please notify me if there's anything else you'd wish to discuss, or if anything changes. Of course. I'd like to be a computer. Replicate a banquet table full of Federation foodstuffs from most member worlds. 
And with that, a fairly large banquet table appears on top of the table, <coughs> covered in every <coughs> sort of food that one could imagine. I wink at him and I was like, go for the Andorian stuff. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he starts nibbling away at some things and then begins to take hearty bites out of the s foods that would contain a m more bitter flavor, uh, avoiding mm. much of the heavily sweetened stuff, uh, focusing more on meat and the bitter plants. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think that our guess has been properly attended to at the moment. Huh. All right, we head out. <laughs> okay. Following this meeting, um, I'd actually like to uh, meet with uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing to, just to get a brief security update. Okay. Anywhere in particular? Last um, my ready room. Okay. Ready room with the com Lieutenant Commander. Feel free to start the scene. Hi, sir. Uh, At ease. I just wanted to get a uh, brief status update on the nature of our currently evolving uh, criteria admissions. Do you have anything in particular to report? Any concerns that I must be aware of? Well, the 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 living missile was very interesting it was definitely something we had not expected nothing at all in the hinted at in the mission brief but it's exactly what we're out here to find out about then there's the togolau and the cleaning up of the mess and it appears they're bringing closer together them and the Vatars, which makes the stability of the region potentially a lot more stable. And do you find that these updates may or may not have the ability to hinder our mission? Oh, it's definitely why we're here. And I'm still looking for what our Romulan, fr Romulan friend has mentioned, that what cured the Borg infestation that he had succumbed to. It's That still just occupies my, my thinking right now. So at that point, I'm not necessarily going to try to use my empathic powers to read Halsing, but would I be able to get a very good sense of possibly not just mistrust, but maybe like a little deep-seated anger? Frustration? Um, not frustration. Well, maybe a little bit. He is definitely focused on anything Borg-related and the cure of the Romulan that floated out there is definitely something he's interested in the togolau kind of freak him out and you kind of get the same vibe um from thinking about the borg and thinking about the togolau i see i see well let me tell you something that i haven't necessarily been able to tell anybody else i feel Personally, you know, be speaking candid, nothing leaves this room. No, uh, sir. With the very nature of the Togolau and the Borg, and hybrid species in general, myself partially being one of them, I just don't, I, I, I can never actually have the ability, not either whether to properly read them or to properly just feel comfortable. So I suppose you could say, as a small extension, that I don't necessarily feel comfortable in my own skin. Now, this has nothing to do with command abilities, whether or not it's going to impact our mission or things like that. 
the very fact of the nature that there is either a hive-minded species or a joint species just coming together and working towards one goal should be everything that we should strive for, at least in the Federation. Not necessarily in terms of overlord, but in terms of the potential of the symbiotic ability for cooperation. And the further and further we dive into the Lasai expanse, the less and less I actually trust that these things have the ability to function as well as they do on the cover. Uh, it's not so much a symbiotic species trill. I totally understand and and everything with that, the two species working together as one. The Borg and the Togolau consume. They don't Bill, they consume and destroy in the process of what was and takes all that away. The Rhymelin is, I forgot his name. I wrote it down and I can't find it anymore. But he's offered a way to possibly bring those people back from that hell. Um, is there GM sorry, GM interrogative here? Yeah, GM interrogative here is that the Borg are cured, all of them. Um, space, long story short, space wizards did it. And <coughs> all of the uh, all of the Borg drones, or 99.999% of the Borg drones, decided to join or follow the space wizards to their path of whatever they wanted to seek next. So there are no more Borg left. Um, the they, Romulans, they all disappear. All the ones that were already converted have left and gone with them. Correct. The only ones that were left behind, were, well, the Romulans chose to stay behind, even though they they gave up their Borg, and they chose to stay behind. And the Zell Borg were a different mutational or different animal altogether. So, Roger. Yeah. And. And it, 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 it stands with anybody that had been within the Federation colonies and everything that had been taken over by the Borg, they would have left with the Space Wizards. Most of them did. I'm sure some chose to stay behind, most notably Seven of Nine, but most of them chose to leave. As Borg. Well, former Borg, yes. Free Borg of their own free will, but yes. Well, quick lore updates. Thanks. But getting back into the, the thick of it, sorely needed, though. Yeah, uh, sorry. I'm having to process everything. But Apologies. Um, not a problem. I probably missed it in the in, in the reading. But so, and your 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 sense of Liam really getting emotional, almost like familiar familial type feelings about the Borg and a hatred for them. Well, before I uh, start unwrapping that onion, I am going to lean back and just say, in terms of exactly how they operate, even though it's most definitely different on the surface, is it really though? I most definitely, don't get me wrong, I mean, the Togolau and the Borg most definitely consume. And it's not necessarily a joint operation. But at the same time, at some point at the end of the line, there is always something else, something there that lies beyond. And if that, th that, that thing has the possibility to either be influenced not necessarily reasoned with, because we've learned that through trial and error, especially with the Borg. But if that has the ability to be influenced or changed or interacted with in some way, we kind of owe it to ourselves, no matter what we feel, to take that jump, to take that risk, no matter how uncomfortable we may be, and no matter how personal it may get. It's hard to retain that. No one's asking you to be a saint. All I'm asking is for your best. I and that'll always give to you, sir. So if there's anything in particular that you'd like to discuss in the future, 
whether necessarily routine to our mission or the Borg or otherwise. Believe me, it has nothing to do with my abilities, but I most definitely understand. All right. Okay. In that case, I'll just kind of end it there. Okay. If Liam wants to reveal anything more in the future. Yeah, balls in his court. Um, you might want to look at uh, his his record during your off off time, or if you want to do that right now, I'll fill you in. I think uh, definitely during the off time. All right. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Thishrad, welcome aboard. Um, is there anything you'd like to do before the ship hurtles into potentially hostile uh, Vitar's space? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary at, at this point, no. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, Captain, you, well, both you and Liam Helsing receive a calm from the bridge. Captain, the Vitaris patrols are picking up, or they're changing up their p patterns again. They're doing one that we haven't recorded yet, and they might get a little close to us. Request permission to move the ship? Granted. Yes, sir. Go ahead and keep me informed. Always, sir. Okay. Well, in that case, duty calls. Stride back out onto the bridge. Okay. Uh, the bridge is uh, running in quiet mode, much like everyone else, or much like the entire ship during active camouflage, or black alert, I think we've taken to calling it. Um, Lieutenant Alec is currently off shift. And it is Mr. Jefferson Davis, who is on shift, who is still chafing from the amount of s simulator training that uh, uh, Lieutenant Erkin put him through. There we go. Well, perhaps he should have done a better job last time, then. Yeah, maybe, you know, don't uh, fly your ship directly into a rocket. That might be a good uh, thing for a pilot. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so the system of Vax, it is a, there's only three planets in the Vax system. Um, so it's a fairly uh, compressed system. Uh, there is an orange giant, um, which has uh, swelled to the point of disrupting its closest planet, uh, Mercury, a uh, Mercury-like class B, I believe it's called. Uh, Vax itself is a class L. And then far, farthest out is a uh, class J gas giant, similar to Jupiter. And then the Kuiper Belt, where you guys are, is fairly ext extensive. Um, and a lot of it appears to have been mined out previously. Uh, you can still see the occasional mine hauler or mine expeditions trying to find more mineable resources in here. Um, your covert scans show that there is surprisingly not a f large space or uh, shipyard facility around the planet or in the system itself, but there's a small one that's orbiting the main planet of Vax. In fact, I will just take you straight to the Vax map and we can begin. Naturally, it is being a military planet. There are a lot of the little uh, ships lying around. There is a significant amount of uh, data being sent back and forth, not only between all the different ships, but also to the um, uh, the, the circular stations and from the stations down to the planet itself. Uh, a lot of this. A lot of the signals look very similar to what you have seen around the planet of Ix, 
where the Eternity Research Group was sending and receiving brainwave or personality information. Uh, the planet of Vax is uh, Class L, with only about 10-15% of the planet's surface covered in a very, very alkali or, uh, alkaline ocean. Very salt, very salty. Uh, not much in the way of an ice cap, and atmosphere is pretty thin. Uh, its moon is a appears to have been terraformed. There's no way that this thing could be a natural moon, right? Uh, because the moon itself is class M. And it's a little far to get any good readings on with your sensors in its slightly dilapidated state. But it appears to be primarily a farming colony or agriculture. <clears throat> How do you wish to proceed, Captain? Oh boy, what a great question. I'm really curious about, uh, I still want to get the majority of the, I don't want to say miscellaneous, but I kind of want to get the uh, tertiary stuff out of the way. So I would like to investigate the moon a little bit further and see um, exactly, what was it called? The Infinity Project? Um, uh, see? Yeah, Eternity, Eternity Research Pro Group. The Eternity Research Group. I'd like to see if there's any correlation, at least. If this if this moon is being used for agricultural purposes, and since we kind of know, at least on some other planets earlier in the Imperium, that they have, that at least the Eternity Group runs on a semi-capitalistic uh, society, I'm kind of curious exactly how that integrates with other things such as agriculture before I start going directly into a government and military sensibilities now that we're here. Okay, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, the only problem is that you are going to have to bring this ship through the system to get much closer. Um, with the amount of ships flying around, this is going to require a uh, pretty good sound or pretty good uh, running silent test. I was going to look up if there was a rules for running silent, and I keep forgetting to do so. Um, so, I got a question while you're looking that up, if I could. Yes. Did we find out, like, like their missiles had intelligent bodies in them? Like, are their ships ran the same way? They don't appear to be. Uh, okay. The, the way that it has been explained to you from the Grot is um, to serve in the Imperial uh, forces basically means that you have a body waiting for you when you die so most life is very cheap okay i was just wondering if like you know you know our warp drives and engines if theirs was like literally alive <laughs> nope so most part there isn't okay yeah so, um, now if you want to make a running silent check, there doesn't seem to be anything in rules about it, or I'm just not looking up right. So I'm just going to make things up and hope for the best. Uh, he I would have it no other way. Ah. Okay, so because Urkin isn't around, uh, if someone could please take a hold of Mr. Jefferson. And this is going to be a control uh, plus con test and the ships will assist because you're running silent this will be a engineering plus or sorry no this will be a structure plus con test nope structure yeah structure plus con test for the engines with a, and I'm going to set the difficulty to be a uh, difficulty to be a three and I'm going to front end and start d ditching some of my threat early to increase the complication 18 to 20. <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, take care of the ship. Excellent. We have no momentum, do we? That's going to be pretty not... difficult. We down. It's difficulty three, so, you know, two successes from the pilot and one from yeah. the ship. 
Uh, does Helm Operations apply for Jefferson? I would think so. All right, so I'll do Control plus Con for Jefferson plus Helm Operations Control. Con. Now we've used Jefferson again, so. <laughs> yep. Oh. So you could. Okay. Okay. So you make your way to around the uh, many moons of the um, the Class J giant, and Jefferson thinks he'll be sneaky and s try to get through an extensive uh, series of rings. Um, however, he does not. Or your tactical sensors do not pick up a a sensor array that is hidden within the rings. And with and uh, Helsing, you notice on your sensors that there are two of the cruiser class, which have been identified as Sparham class cruisers, are making have diverted course to intercept, and are raising their weapons. We're spotted, Captain. They're arming weapons. Well, I suppose it's only a matter of until we reveal ourselves. But I'm not like quite sure. more holodeck time again. It sounds like it. I thought Urken fucking trained him well, but I suppose not. But I can't blame anybody right now. Jefferson just... Sorry, sir. I thought I was trying to be... Well, it happens. It does. In any case, just to be clear, um, we tripped an active detection grid and we've been spotted, but is our... Since we're still running in black alert, uh, well, I suppose that's actually a fucking something that we're gonna have to roll for. Can we exactly uh, make a sensors check to see with whether they have our exact positioning or? Uh, absolutely. I think this should be an insight plus security test from our tactical officer, and ships can assist with uh, sensors plus security, and this will be a difficulty of two. Right, and shipboard systems. Yeah, it should work fine. That's cool. So Insight security. Okay. There we go. Two momentum. Oh, yes. Uh, so a further analysis of the grid and the ships moving towards you. Uh, it appears to be a mesh style... Uh, grid. So if one relay trips, then there is a general idea within within about a thousand meters, or sorry, about a hundred to two hundred kilometers uh, cube where your ship could be. So it might not be precise, but it's pretty darn close. I see. Yeah. Well. We are a scale 5 ship, correct? The you are scale 5, yep. And the Spartan cruisers are also scale 5. Well, necessarily, shooting back is obviously not an option. We're not here to start, start a war. But at the same time, um, if I have the ability to get out of this without firing a shot, I'd prefer it. But at the same time, I would like to call down to the and just tell our uh, intrepid guests that, well, we're in the Vataya space now, and it seems like a meeting will come soon enough. So I'd like you to be able to stand by to speak with, uh, speak with the cruisers that are currently in range. Uh, of course, Captain. Uh, computer, is there some way that you could make a communication system for me down here? Huh, that was easy. <laughs> Uh, computer, can you replicate me some working hand weapons? Nope, apparently not. <laughs> Worth a shot, Captain. Uh -huh. uh, so, effectively, you've, uh, there is now the ability for him to enter conversation three-way or hail himself if he wish. Hail by himself if he wishes. At the same time, if he does attempt to hail, it still needs to. I'd still appreciate it if it chimes through the bridge first. Yeah, I I would assume that be would be a rather prudent security myth, 
measure. <laughs> just make, just uh, double checking. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Captain, open a frequency using the following um, prefix code. That should, if you want them to not fire immediately. In the same vein, before we do that, um, quickly checking with uh, Leo. When we took, when we had that away mission down to that satellite planet, and we kept we intercepted some of those prefix guys, would that also be applicable in the situation here? You got to think back when I'm talking about the away mission. I forget exactly yeah. what the name of the planet was. X. Um, X. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you spent about a week on the planet, so you probably have a good understanding of their military pr protocols. Yeah, because it was almost a week, or we kept the uh, the little duck blind up, and then we decided that it was getting too close to like getting caught, so we took it down. So, I'd like to broadcast in between these choices of the prefix code by our guest and some of the other things that we encountered while we were there on X, uh, whichever one will necessarily just allow them to stand down, but not necessarily so much give them an order, something to make them pop. Not to give them an order to confuse them or to make them think that they're being uh, diverted for the wrong reasons or they feel like they're being compromised. Understandable. Hey, we come, hey, we come in peace speaking. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything that you wish to specifically mention with the uh, hail? Um, I want to combine that hail with a prefix code. Okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, I will say that this will be a presence plus command test. Uh, Liam can assist with uh, probably reason plus security. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. Oh boy. All right. Presence plus command here. Use momentum, sir. Of course. That's a given. <laughs> How much do we have? Um, two, right? Two. Yep. I'll go ahead and spend one. No hope, but I didn't make it worse. I will definitely say that at least one of my many focuses have to apply here. Let's say pat undercover operations or pattern recognition. Pattern rec would probably work. Okay, then. Well, Ooh, there's yes. double success, double crits, so that's two more momentum for you guys. Uh, so you do, uh, you pick the best, or you pick the best pattern that you remember and attach it to the prefix code. Both of the Sparham class cruisers power down their weapons and come to a full stop. But you detect that there are... Uh, they're they're encrypted. Uh, they are sending encrypted channels back to their fleet command, and they are set. They are signaling a. Uh, shortly after that, is beamed back and forth. They be, they send out a general hail on all frequencies. If there is an intruder, or if there's an intruder in and around Vitar space, identify yourself now. Well, at that point, uh, I don't mind responding. And at this point, I'll hand it over to our photonic friend here. All right. And I, before he starts speaking, I'm just saying, nice words, please. And then no, huh? while also limiting um, on that hail, uh, still limiting the ability to give away our position, but just here for him to communicate, communicate and give updates. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What would he say? Honored Curvet of the Sparham class cruisers. My my name ah my name and my name is Grat. Grat Jarlock. 
of the 53rd Remote Defense Fleet, sent to patrol our most uh, per, set or sent to protect our most holy of space from intruders of the Borg several years ago. I have been returned with potential with explorers. I had completed my mission successfully, and they have returned me home. Grat, please, uh, please reply with your, with the proper challenge code to the following sequence of numbers. And they rattle off a series of numbers, and without hesitation, Grat responds. Unknown vessel, your your the challenge has been accepted, and you and we will not be attacked. Please, please reveal yourself for escort to Vax, where you can return our hero to uh, receive a proper award for his mission. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, look across the bridge and before we uh, yeah, reveal ourselves. Opinions? Options? That's what we're here for, sir. I did that. Yep. In that case, we're in agreement. Yeah. Please deactivate the active clam flash. Alright. Hmm. It's more of a as um, extra energy returns to all systems, the bridge lights uh, flicker back to full strength once more. For the first time in a couple of days, it takes you a second to blink and uh, get your eyes back to normal. Down in the engine room, your warp core thrums with power as it is once again able to, and once again it will broadcast its existence to the entirety of the galaxy. Uh, down in engineering, Cassatt looks at uh, the shrine and goes, "You." It is illogical for you to dance every time the lights go down and come back up, Commander. Well, if if that was your only criteria for um things, well, you know, it's important to enjoy enjoy the little things in in life. After all, you never know when it's the the last moment. It was it was either that or um clench uh clench my nether regions um as tightly as possible in, in these circumstances. Kassat raises an eyebrow turns around, goes back to work, and there is a slight shaking of his head as he does so. Uh, on the bridge, let's cut back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Ensign Vault says, Sir, we're receiving a direct hail now from uh, the Sparham cruiser to our port. Well, audio or visual? A uh, visual, sir. On screen. A rugged in um. Well, they all sort of look rugged by your standards, but a male Vitars in full uniform appears on the view screen ahead of you. Unidentified ship. You have ventured deep into Vitar space without tri tripping any of our alerts. I must commend you for doing so, and I'm looking forward to explaining how you did so, so we can fortify our defenses in the future. There will be, uh, we'll have plenty of time for an exchange of inquiries, but at the same time, you must understand that we did so not to invade, but for the purposes of our own protection and gathering information. But we are, but what, uh, forgive me, I'm already forgetting his name again. I haven't given one actually. Uh, oh, oh well, uh, Grat, the Grat, Grat. down. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Grat down in the holodeck, or the Curvet on you're currently talking to. I believe I named him Jarkal. Yeah, it was somewhat a J. Yeah. Okay. Well, as Jarkal has already mentioned, we are explorers, and we are here eager to return him to you. So, let me be the first to finally properly introduce myself. My name is Captain Luxor Arthur Sengrel of the Federation Starship. The F 
Federation. Starfleet? I seem to... There seem to recall reading a... Mm, defense memorandum about one of your star bases operating in the near vicinity. Probably in the Blood Nebula. I'm Curvet Drax. Well, nice to meet you, Curvet Drax. And By have, all means. Go ahead. And I, I have orders to escort you to the planet system where I'm sure where our Imperator has taken an interest in all things external to our empire. And the arrival of Starfleet in the Nebula, let alone Starfleet in our borders, is going to be cause for, knowing him, either a, either a public mutilation or a banquet. Hopefully the latter. Oh, well, that's very kind of him. <laughs> 50-50 situations, the type that we excel at. I appreciate a man that knows his options. In any case, I don't want to keep you from doing your job. Very well. Please fall in astern. You will be escorted. Do not power on your weapons or go or change your speed from what ours is set to. And on that note, he will bring you in. So, let's see. Back to the planet system, because we are bouncing about today. You are escorted by... Uh, you are brought in along the... Uh, so that you are almost opposite the moon. And then escorted around, and two f smaller uh, destroyer-class vessels move in beside you. Uh, there are three larger... There are several larger carriers, but they are indeed keeping their distance. Uh, you are brought into along the orbit, and um, we once again receive a call from Curvet Drax, Captain of the USS Nighthawk, uh, please await these positions in orbit and await a call from our magistrates. I, out of character. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention the Nighthawk. Oh, I'm sorry. We totally introduced ourselves. Oh. Ah. My sincere apologies. I did not mention that. Ah. Then. Captain of the Federation, please wait here. Our Imperator and the magistrates will hail you as soon as they are able. And uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, your tactical console lights up like a Christmas tree as it detects no less than six different weapons platforms, both in orbit and on the surface, locking onto you with various weaponry. A Christmas tree or a disco ball? Uh, well, because this is not a this is not a uh, Thashran prank, so it's a Christmas tree. Okay. I mean, I also have a disco ball as well. <laughs> Toby does a John Travolta. Yeah. Oh no. We're going to have a dancing Groot by the end of this, I know it. This is what happens when they, they let me um, have some alone time with, with our uh, Tokelau friend. Yes. <laughs> Staying alive. <laughs> That's, That's the motto. motto. <laughs> <laughs> While uh, we're being brought in, I will uh, turn to uh, my security chief and just say, well, by all means, prepare for his contact procedures, but these people are obviously quite martial. So put the entire security staff on alert and make sure that no sensitive data has the ability to be accessed or breached during the duration of our visit. I right, sir, we'll get with um, Commander Thrashan to make sure he locks down engineering and the XO can lock down the binars and anything in that, in that area. I'm going to actually head to science if that's all right and uh, um, prepare the because uh, we have to transport him basically in a tricorder. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go get that ready. And uh, I have another little thing I'm going to get ready if that's all right, sir. By all means, take your time, but be quick. We're okay. on a tight schedule now. Yeah. Um, 
I want to take down. I want to go down to science and uh, drop off Togi into his little terrarium, I guess, that we have for him. Mm-hmm. And um, so, but I want to take the Bionars to um, get him ready. However, they packaged him up before that we can, his consciousness is safe and secure and we can move him. Okay. But I also want to take. Um, do we have like, is it like a mess hall or uh, um, something like that? Um, what What do you, oh, you're just. Wait, wait. What I would like to do is um, I want to get a graph cart and fill it up with uh, food, basically kegs of water, ah. of pure replicated brain water. Okay. As a peace offering to take down with us. An interesting idea. Okay. Uh, the bar... Uh, what Woolher, the barkeep, says that it is not... It's the oddest thing that someone has ordered in vast quantities in his bar. But he's more than happy to uh, fill up the as many cargo barrels as possible. Sweet. Thank you. Yep. So yeah. I basically tell him to have him deliver them to whenever he gets a chance with a grav cart to uh, transport a room three. Because <laughs> we know we never use transport a room one. No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, that's probably better than my idea of uh, th- throwing him in a box of uh, packing peanuts. Uh, okay, that that's fine. Uh, roughly an hour or so in orbit. Uh Rather tense, assuming none of you guys attempt to do anything. I don't think you are. Um, a chime comes through on Vault's console. Hmm. Captain, we're being hailed from the planet surface. Well, is there an identifier? <laughs> they are identifying themselves as a personal message from high from the High Imperator of the Vitars Imperium. Uh, and I just lost the name because that's how it, I do things. Is it a banquet invitation? Because if not, then we should probably decline. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> from uh, the High Imperator himself, Jalper the Final. Well, tell him that it would be a pleasure to make his acquaintance. Myself and along with uh, our friend Grax here. Captain, he is... I'm not entirely sure he's requesting, sir, but he wishes to have the first meeting of our people on the ship. Well, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. Um, Make sure... We can prepare the conference room and everything else. Like, since we've already, I'm assuming we've already done those things for his contact procedures anyway. Probably. So have, so have him uh, send us his coordinates of uh, his party that will, and then be on them, making sure to scan for weapons and any other possibly hostile uh, in pieces of technology. All right. Scanning devices and stuff like that. Viral infections. <laughs> Potentially. Not like we know anything about that. If we transport them on board, we could separate that out. Truth. Uh, Captain, he says that he... Uh, the, the message states that he is aware of our transporter technology and is ready to beam up at our leisure. Well, very well then. Then we'll go ahead and meet them in transporter room three. Okay, transporter room three. Here we go. Ooh, it's been a while since we've been here. We have. Let's see. All right, who wishes to go to transporter room three? Oh, I'll be there, says Hilton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> um, I technically am there, so. <laughs> you have no choice. Yeah. Okay. I'm always down to meet new new uh, folks. Okay. 
we will bring along the captain. Let's move everyone into the proper layer here. There we go. The captain. Bash Bashir. Wrong layer. Helsing. And the chief engineer. And let's say that Kenor. Let's say that Kenor is going to show up just in case they are carrying a biological agent on board. I believe that's everyone. Everybody that I'm okay with, most definitely. Okay. And one or two, possibly, you know, security guards here as well. I yeah, honor put them guard. Right by the door. Yeah, honor guard. Honor yeah, guard. guard. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, do we do? Are we all in dress uniform and all that too? Of course, you better be. Yes. How are you oh. not? One tricorder playing the Federation anthem, but at the same time scanning them for any devices. Naturally. Okay, let's get these guys on board. Well, go ahead and energize at your leisure. Energize. Chief. Energizing. Oh my happens. god, they beat into the wall! <laughs> uh, there is a hum of effect as a regal looking uh, Vitar appears in the first or the closest transporter pad. Uh, he is. Uh, his skin is uh, dark orange, almost, on br almost verging on the color brown. And he is surrounded by. Uh, four other Vitars completely armored. Um, one of them, uh, without s saying anything, pulls out a small device, uh, pushes a button, and a instrumental fanfare plays. And it... Why am I pasting so many bloody copies of these guys? Oh, they fucking oh, fast one on they us. Like, Alright! Fire! They hijacked, fire! They hijacked the transporter signal. There we go. <clears throat> and the fanfare goes on for slightly longer than it's comfortable, but eventually it <laughs> blares out into a uh, first, fifth octave cadence tune. God, if we're and, not any longer, I have to start dancing. I was tapping my foot. Uh, once it's done, all four of his honor guard uh, double bang their um, pectoral section of their armor. And from the one that played the... Um, bah. One that played the fanfare. Introducing Imperator Japler the Final. The last, lo the last lord that the Vitars Imperium shall ever see. And so is this armor different than the other? Is it more, you know? It's uh, more or more ornate than the armor that you have seen on file. Most definitely. The ones we wore? <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> okay, you know, that's what I figured. I was just checking. Mm -hmm. When they say that he's the last one to oversee, that either implies he's going to be immortal or their expected society to collapse right after this. I'm assuming it's the cloning thing, but yeah. He... And the Imperator speaks, and his voice just booms, just uh, filling the chamber, even though he's sort of speaking at normal volume. At least that's what it looks like. Captain Sangral of the United Federation of Planets, I bid you welcome to Vax, the glorious homeworld of the, of the Vitars Imperium. Well, thank you very much for this invitation. Imperator, I spent a long time, and I'm sure we have a lot to discuss. This, this is my crew. My first officer, Commander Bashir. My chief of security, uh, Lieutenant Commander Liam House. Lieutenant Commander uh, <laughs> Sashran, out of character. <laughs> <Yes>. Still. <laughs> my uh, chief engineer, uh, Sashran. And my doctor, uh, Lieutenant Commander Kanor. Along with my transporter operator, Chief Zell. I'll try the arm thing, the slapping my chest. <laughs> That's an honorific. The um, the Imperator nods silent, 
uh, quite pleased by the gesture. Mm -hmm. Captain, this is a fine, this is a fine ship. And it, since uh, Curvet Tremal r reported of the contact with the Federation inside the Blood Nebula, I am, I was hoping to meet you one day. I'm pleased that you came to me. It's not often I'm able to leave Vax for long ch periods of time. Come, yeah. I'm interested to see your vessel. By all means, let me give you a guide tour. Okay. Uh, any scene or any place in particular you, you wish to have a chat? Or where do you wish Just to take through. it? We will uh, we'll go through like the majority of the decks. Um, we'll definitely go stop by the holodeck so he can meet. I didn't actually make that one of the first stops. Okay. So. We'll just bring everyone along for the ride then. We'll see. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Kinor just departs uh, back to her sickbay as soon as the transporter... As soon as she leaves the transporter room. After nodding that they are clear of any contaminants. Into the holodeck we go. All right, as we enter, I'll uh, take the little device and hook it into the wall thing and present him again. All right. Uh, he materializes again and immediately bangs his uh, pectoral and goes in for a deep bow. Uh, Praetor Jalliper, or Jappler. Praetor Jappler the final. I am Grat. I am Grat Jaluk. Please, I am honored to be in your presence. The Praetor makes a simple rise gesture. Captain, thank you so much for returning him to us. I understand that there was a unprovoked attack that we wish could have been avoided. And I do so hope we can make re a amends for such an attack. Uh, out of character. What exact? Which attack is he talking about? He's That's referring. Actually? No, yeah, he's referring to the, to the missile missile attack. I yeah, see. when when Grat whistled like a missile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Oh. Mm. Wow. You knew it was coming. <laughs> it's been. You knew it was. It had to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. <laughs> Well, in any case, by all means, uh, we have an expression, water under the bridge. So that's, by all means, it's, it happened, and it's in the past, and now we move forward. I hope, does your technology, or are you able to give us his memory module so we can integrate him back into a, a body proper for a hero of the Imperium? If that's what Grant wishes, by all means. I believe we do. Grant nods his head silently. Absolutely. This device will has his um, brain patterns attached to it. Um, whenever you are ready to depart, I can hand it off to you uh, with instructions from our um, head scientist. Excellent. And... Uh, the Imperator makes a reach for the device. For the device. Okay, so I'll unattach it and turn him off and hand it to him. All right. Uh, before it touches his hand, one of his bodyguards takes uh, two swift steps in front of Jappler and grabs the device. Then takes two swift steps back and uh, attaches it to his uh, belt. Okay. Captain, it, it is, I understand if you are unfamiliar with our customs. However, as an Imperator sets foot on someone's vessel, it is customary that they are thrown a feast. In that case, that is something we could most definitely arrange. Splendid. Please, please, come to Eton Forward. Splendid. I look forward to trying uh, to trying some of the... Uh, to trying some of the Federation's food. 
And possibly you might find some of ours that appeal as well. Do we know anything about Vitar's, like, uh, food? Very little, based on what you have seen the Grat prefer. Uh, they seem to prefer bitter-type food. Or, if, barring that, then um, un, un, uh, unsweetened meats. So, they like their steak, you know... Um, uh, they like their steak rare to medium well, or medium rare, but don't add ketchup, barbecue sauce, or any of that stuff to it. Well, of course not. They're, well, not, they're barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> kind of monster. What do you take them for? Okay. To the mess hall. Everyone is here, except those who are not. Uh, let's see. Togi's not here. Everyone else is apparently here. Togi's in our hearts. I didn't want to throw Togi in the middle of this yet. It was like, whoa, you have one of the plants. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> uh, a Japler, or the Imperator, um, follows you into the lounge, lets out a small whistle, and immediately locks on to the fact that Woolher has three arms and three legs, and immediately scampers, or immediately strides over to where he is. Fascinating. That's when we find out that uh, num number of limbs um, leads to a superstition about uh, uh, fertility status in, in Vitaris culture. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You crew, I don't... Captain, will you allow this individual to be dissected so that we may under... further understand his genome? I'm afraid I cannot consent to that. Good. I would be... A... Uh, that was a joke, Captain. And he looks over to his guards, laugh. And the guards <laughs> laugh in ha 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 before going silent again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in any case, um, as you may or may not have already known, that the Federation is made up of multiple member worlds and hundreds of member species. So we do have people of uh, all shapes and sizes, and they come in all different forms upon the ship. The Imperator nods and just... Uh while his bodyguards begin to consume some of the food that has been replicated and laid out among the tables, uh, the Imperator grabs a drumstick of something large and begins to chew... Targ! <laughs> That's more of a Klingon food, I would think, but... Yeah. But he wanted to try Federation foods. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> of something big and meaty, and looks out over the uh, viewport down at his planet. Hmm. Well, in any case, Imperator, um, we have a wide variety of foods, stuffs, and a wide uh, selection of things available from our replicator. I admit that since this is our first gaunt, that customs are most definitely being introduced to each other on the fly. But I am really interested in discussion with you the, the very nature of what's going on in your sector of space, and especially within the site. We didn't come here, but I want to stress that we didn't come here uh, to invade, nor did we come here as conquerors. And I believe you and I both have a great deal of uh, mutual interest in this sector, especially when it involves the Borg. Of that we can agree, Captain. Tell me, have, have the, Fed the Federation have encountered these cybernetical menaces as well? Yes, we have. Um, most definitely, the Borg were first introduced to our region of the galaxy quite some time ago, and we've definitely had our multiple run-in sits. So, because of that, and I can understand every species' ongoing struggle with such mechanical, as some would say, you know, monstrosities, I think it's definitely in our best interest to, in a sense, you know, have a meeting of the minds as you would and use that as a positive jumping-off point to help facilitate relationships between our cultures. I, f I fully understand, and I'm looking forward to learning more about this Federation. 
I must admit, it caught me by surprise to find that there was a species that had set up inside the Blood Nebula after the Borg were vanquished. But, well, our, our interest in that is purely scientific. Understandable. Ours was, if you can believe it, religious. The red or the bloody nebula has been a feature in the skies of Vax ever since we were a young species. There were many, uh, when it was in the sky and could be seen all night without obstruction, it was deemed a good omen. When clouds shrouded it and caused it to drift away from sight, there was omens of ill tidings that shook empires to its core. Thankfully, we have ascended to a more enlightened age now, and realize that it's nature. Still, it is a very, we still find it very beautiful to look upon. I mean, I'm sure. at night. Sailor's delight. <laughs> I'm so the people at uh, uh, Station Cerberus was, are definitely appreciative of the view there as well. Yes. Yes, Kervit Termal's report on the first contact said that they were a peaceful, if somewhat well-armed, species that could pose a military threat. And if I am to look upon your ship, Captain, I think we could take in a fight. But then again, we outnumber you about 900 to 1, or 97 to 1. If I was here to fight, I most definitely wouldn't have revealed myself in the manner that I did. He laughs, and his uh, bodyguards each laugh four times mechanically and then stop. Well, I, you know, I'm sure we could uh, appreciate a little bit of humor there. But I say in a more stern tone, not hostile, but in a more stern tone, I was not joking. <clears throat> Captain, I any species to come as far as you claim to have must possess a significant num amount of technology. We do not... We may have been rash and reckless in the, the past with who we chose to fight, but the Borg have humbled us greatly. We wish just to reclaim our territory for now. Now, what would some of this food look like? And just tossing the half un or half eaten drumstick on the floor, he picks up a goblet of wine and drinks from it deeply. And the go Wilher re realizes that this might be a long night and goes to break out the extra rations. Uh, now, anything else you guys wish to do this this scene, or shall we move on to a more a different? Shall we move on to the next act? As long as we make sure we keep that uh, toggle out in its court, then I'm a okay with whatever happens next. <laughs> Is there one of the bodyguards that looks to be the leader of the bodyguards? Uh, doesn't appear to be. Uh, each one is, um, uh, each one is equally armored, and neither of them, or neither of them, are looking to the other for uh, signals or leads. Uh, they are fully helmed and have r barely spoken. I think you're only you're only able to determine that one is female just because she removed her mask to slam some food into it before s slamming her ma mask shut again. All right. Okay, copy that. And then... Where did Helsing go? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, so the eve... Uh, the scene... Ah, it's been a long evening. The impromptu party lasts at least six hours. Um, dragging in crewmen from all over the ship, coming in to see what the noise and hubbub is about. Um, 
assuming this you want this to be an open bar party, Captain. Sure, I'm not here to start permitting uh, my crew. I'm, I'm, I don't mean I'm, I'm not here to start start limiting my crew uh, in terms of their fraternization. They know what they're up against. Uh, and the sh um, here's a question: What would you do if the Shran decided to start doing karaoke? <laughs> I'd be disappointed, but I wouldn't stop him. You'd be disappointed until you heard the singing. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, let's see. It's on bay. Sorry, just doing something in another window at the moment. Cool. Okay. And eventually, a fairly um, drunken Imperator attempts to stride and is more or less carried by two of his bodyguards to the... Mm. Uh, back to the transporter room where he bids you a slurred farewell and as soon as he remembers what happens tonight what happened tonight uh, he shall invite you to the planet surface for a full tour of what the Vitaris Imperium can offer well I appreciate that and I look forward to our mutual bid for alright and Bashir and S uh, Helsing, if you haven't, please check your PMs on Discord. Roger that. Okay, and with that, these guys beam away. We'll just hide them, because you never know, they might come again. There. Okay, so, um, let's say that by ship's time, it is now roughly... Uh, 8 o'clock p.m., uh, 20 hundred hours. And most, given the state of the Imperator, it's most likely you're not going to hear from them until the morning. Uh, so, uh, let's see. What does uh, Shast the Shran wish to do? Um, so they, they've kind of settled for the night? They've beamed off the ship and headed back to, yeah. back to the planet surface. Have we taken Togi out? No one's made mention of what they're doing with Togi yet, so no. I took him back to the Arboretum, but yeah, he's still... In okay. The science thing, yeah. Oh, he he started oh, the, He started out at about, and then I put him away. Okay. Uh, I yeah, guess I, I would do, Yeah. I'll do the responsible thing and do a, a sweep over the, the ship and make sure uh, they didn't leave any unpleasant surprises behind. Okay. Uh, this will be an insight plus engineering, and the ship can assist with sensors plus security. Difficulty level of two. Sensor security on the ship. Mm -hmm. Well, there's your two successes. Uh, would you say it was for me? Uh, that would be insight plus engineering for you. Okay, so that's another two momentum for you guys. Cool. Um, you are pleased to see that they're that they have left no bugs whatsoever on board. They appear to have been completely um, playing within the rules. Oh, well, that's good to know. Excellent. Uh, let's see, uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, what do you wish to do this evening? Um, I need to pull uh, the captain to the side. Okay. Um, I take out out of my pocket a piece of paper telling the captain and showing him that one of the bodyguards slipped this to me and telling us to check out their forest preserve on the moon. So apparently some suspicions you might have had. Well, in that case, when exactly was this information delivered to you? Surreptitiously. Walked uh, up behind me. I couldn't even tell you which one it was. Well, in any case, uh, while we are going to 
track this down. We need to pull up ship's records. By all means, investigate internal ship sensors. I'd like to see if we can necessarily identify the... In any case, if we are to... I don't... I am not a fan of first contact information being delivered in such an obscure <laughs> manner, but at the same time, we can't just leave. As uh, I see them talking in the corner, I walk up to them both and um, hand the captain my note. Well, I'll mine, says the, mine says the same thing to bed, uh, to check out the forest. Well, we can't so just... Go, sir. We can't necessarily just move the entire ship at the moment because they're going to ask us where we're going. So at, at that point in time, if you are going to go check out the nature of uh, the, the forest, the agricultural moon, then we'll either have to find a way to segue into it or you need to plan a stealthy elimination. I have a possible an idea we could do out in the open. I'm listening. I claim that I I grew up on an industrial world after we had to my fa after I was relocated and I haven't seen trees. Seeing the trees on the forest moon as beautiful as they are would warm my heart. <laughs> yeah. Let's warm hope your works. ice cold heart. <laughs> I'll definitely bring it up and try to segue into that with our next meeting with uh, Jacqueline. But at the same time... You never split close. the landing party. <laughs> that, that just brought a little tear to my eye. <laughs> But I did first... see some trees at the academy, but nevertheless, yeah. I'd still you... like the both of you to figure out who exactly and which regard it was that slipped you guys this information, because at that um, point we can't necessarily verify or the uh, the, uh, the source of this information. Uh, so I can we can go through the um, the cameras and try to bounce it review through the film to see when they were delivered at about what time. I'll get started. Okay. This sounds like a good scene to do in the science lab. The cameras everywhere. Yes. You know, Starfleet intelligence, paranoia, that makes sense. I got cameras watching cameras. <laughs> In one random deck, there are literally just two cameras just pointed at each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are in here. Get that. And the science lab is available. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Reviewing the scat or reviewing the logs is going to be a. Uh, it's either going to be a control or insight uh, plus security. Uh, difficulty of one. And the ship won't assist, but one of you can assist, obviously. So who's taking lead and who's assisting? Um, I got a nine. And a, yeah, so I'm shooting on a 14. Well, there's the one success or one momentum already. All right, you're now maxed out momentum. <clears throat> uh, it does take a little while just because the camera is, or because the party went so long. Um, but between uh, Liam and Bashir, sort of remembering when they discovered the notes in their possession. Uh, it's not difficult to figure out which of the four identical bodyguards it was. We'll just call them Guard Alpha. And once identified, it's a fairly simple algorithm to have the ship automatically retrace Alpha's movements uh, for throughout the rest of the ship and for the rest of the throughout the rest of the engagement, I should say. Um, anytime 
the the path that guard alpha took want to have a team go along that path looking for any marks any you know dead drop anything like that along the path okay uh, your security teams report no unusual findings. The, everything is as ship shape as possible. Clearly, we must have won them over with the karaoke. <laughs> now, I didn't read you the back side of the note that said, is that a form of torture? <laughs> For some, <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> Uh, all right. It's okay. And I told Torky about your uh, whole plan <laughs> thing, and he just wants to hug you now. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Back, I shoot him with a little handheld water bottle. <laughs> uh, Torky might like that. I think we need to have leash laws established. <laughs> now, was uh, Commander Bashir given his note first? Uh, Bashir was given his note first, and then you... What was the... In the time difference between... Not long. Uh, r roughly uh, 15 minutes difference. And is it written in Vitar Vitaris? Vitarian? Vitarix? Yes, it's written in Vitaris, and okay. that's the reason it took so long for you to translate it, was you had to t surreptitiously take it to a tricorder for the translation matrix to say what it said. Roger that. So what do you think? My gut? Yeah. There's always been something creepy about this downloading into clones. Anytime you deal with clones, the price of life the quality of life it just gets cheapened the way especially the way they're using them a slave labor camp with clones wouldn't be past the realm of conceivable so do you think now our stealth shuttle it can't fly in stealth correct Correct, but it's uh, your technology is more advanced than theirs. It's you've been along, you've been around Vitars to enough now to know that while their ships may appear impressive, your technology is at least fifty years beyond theirs in uh, over overall progress. Technology. Okay. Yeah. So their their ships are powerful, but their sensors and overall systems are not are probably that of maybe an ambassador class they're built to shoot things and sh and shoot things many times just like ambassadors do well, yeah, precisely. people tend to listen uh listen better when you uh, threaten them with big guns first yeah come and... in peace shoot to kill shoot to kill come in peace shoot to kill uh, From a security standpoint, getting past these notes really nags at me because their supreme leader, the last one they'll ever, ever have, has a fifth column, column nest on their personal bodyguard. Well, the two things that come to my mind right away is the fact that it is an imperial society ran by clones. They have some sort of corporation. I'm assuming that the emperor is the CEO. And our guest has already talked about how the emperor gets all the water. Not true. So whatever is could be there it's probably something he's hiding from us not to get you know, now that you got me all paranoid yeah welcome to the world of security 
though technically I have a degree in biology and xenobiology. I would like some samples. Right, Doug? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't bring Doug. No, I'm not. I'm just, he's my co oh. uh, Close his ears. Close his ears. <laughs> he still wants a hug. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, well, no. Let's report to the captain our findings and see what we should do next. Roger. Uh, take a little Twitch stream clip of it. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a 10-minute uh, bio break. And we shall be back shortly, folks. So I will see you guys all momentarily. Can we uh, put...
All right, folks, welcome back. Okay, so uh, morning rolls around. Um, so scene change, we lose the momentum. Oh, we're doing that now, huh? <laughs> yes, we are. I think that's one of the hardest rolls for me to get remember and do. I that really hurt. I sometimes remember. Uh, and Captain, you are, um, are the bridge receives the coordinates for where to beam down for the most, uh, for the grand. Uh, ah, for the grand tour of the uh, Vitars culture. Well, we well, still got to beam down there, but at the same time, we're still going to... I am saying this um, to the rest of the crew here before we beam down here. The plan is to beam down, uh, still go to the ceremony and, you know, have this cultural exchange, but we're still going to try to make an attempt to go to this moon in the best way possible. So be on guard, be an alert, and if you get any other messages, uh, just keep on the lookout. <laughs> Have we been able to identify um, who these individuals were yet? Not necessarily. Um, yes, we could find the, who it was, but we can't specifically. Their armor is identical. There's no way to track exactly who Alpha was. <sighs> Was Alpha the female by chance? Uh, no, not the female. So we know it's now we got a one third chance. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't. Even though it may not necessarily be against the spirit of first contact procedures, with the information that we've received, I kind of want to do my due diligence. And we are intelligence officers after all. So Speaking of if... that, I have an idea. My water. My gift to the Emperor of the Water, Lieutenant Commander, can you put a subtle tracking device on one of the barrels to see exactly what they do with it and where it goes? We might need to have Kassat help make that because I think he's the best at uh, coming up with covert technology. Uh, and so, on that same... Uh, Vault Rani says, uh, Sir, I've done several uh, small insignificant small uh, intelligence gadgets myself. I might be of some assistance. Captain, please. <laughs> you, you keep trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, by all means, you're authorized to proceed, but make sure when you're creating the device that it's on a way that ignores any other obvious uh, radiological or subspace channels. Uh, since we're going, I hope to extend our stay as much as possible. So if you can use some sort of tracking uh, identifier uh, that makes it simple for us, but incredibly difficult to detect and possibly uncommon, but not in the sense that it's so uncommon that they'll be able to recognize it on a, on a sensory scan. Well, did... we, we did make it out of our replicators. Well, by all means, uh, do what you feel like works best. I don't have to tell you the the price if that's such a th such a thing is discovered. At the same time, I would like us all to go down to sick bay, and although I hope that it may be unnecessary, I feel like it's probably for the best if we coat our hands or any other appendages with a, a sensitive analgesic. In that time, in case we need to pick up any other biological data th that may be used as identifying information, whether it be potential of fingerprints or better cursory sensory information when it comes to materials. It's probably for the best if we could just gather that, just on skin-to-skin -skin contact. Don't leave any DNA here that they could track back to anything we might have left behind on X. Of course, that's a given. So those are the two things I want to do before we go ahead and beam down and uh, meet with the impaired. Yeah, I'd like to grab my, uh, like, you know, the older, old, over the shoulder, like, can like sample containers and jars, so I can take samples of whatever um, safely to go along with me and my science tricorder. 
Fair enough. I think a science kit is standard issue for a science officer. If not, it should be. So you now have a science kit. Yay. Okay. So who's going to the planet surface? Raise his hand. Captain. Raise his hand. The first officer, the security officer, uh, two secure, well, two additional um, security officers, and honor uh, guard. Our honor guard. <laughs> Come again. Uh, my apologies. And, and the honor guard all wears the same uniform. The red shirt. The, yeah, red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and let's also bring down. <laughs> let's. Uh, Let's also bring down uh, who was the medic that I made supporting character last oh, time? Zot. Bullion? Zot. There we go. Okay. Let's bring Zot as well. Okay. Uh, uh, Kaladath, any. Uh, would you like the engineer to come along or another character? Oh. oh. That's not where you want to go. We need to go capital city. Here. Do we need to have Kasat and Ronnie do anything for making the covert tracker on the water uh, delivery? Yes, so that would be a uh, control plus engineering or control plus security for Kassat, and then someone else could assist if they like. And this will be a difficulty of three. Because they are not very technical. They're not up to your standards in technology, technology, but they still have a decent amount. So, uh, Shash would be interested in coming unless he's, unless he's needed on to send the ship. Oh, I'd still like one senior officer to be. Okay, on that's the fair bridge. enough. Then Shas can stay, stay and uh, okay. keep watch. Um, but I, I don't think we need. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt for us to take down another engineering supporting character. But you're definitely needed here, considering the nature yep. of this mission. Okay. Um, then Cala, what? Uh, do any of the other support characters appeal to you? Uh, who do we have? Did we say Kasal was going? He can go uh, if you'd like. Oh, it makes sense to send Kassad down. Okay. No. okay. He's probably had a bit enough of my enough of my crap for, for a little while. <laughs> he breathes a small so, sigh of relief. Uh, let's see. So Kassad leading the task on the would probably be best for the yeah the bug the yeah. tracker. That would be right. In... That way, if, if he screws up, he has to deal with his own... Um, exactly. Own Precisely. Fund. So, who wants to take Kassad? Who wants to take Ranny? Operation Plausible Denied. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mind doing a double shift if Ranny is if needed. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I could do Kassad. Alright. Okay. And this is an activation for both characters, so... Feel free to give them a focus or a value as necessary, or a talent. Hmm. Well, what does Randy here have? Mining equipment, gadget chain, sensor operations. Hmm. Trying to think what Kassad could get. Ah, oh, you don't need to think. You don't need to give him one right now. Yeah. Just think about it, and yeah, we'll come back to it. We'll probably do it at the end yeah. of the session or something. Sure, we can come back to the end. So let's see them rolls, folks. And would you want them to roll? Uh, ooh, good question. What was it? Uh, I believe it was control plus security, or control plus engineering. Okay. Difficulty of three. Uh, yes, difficulty three. So both of them just rolling normally, or is one person supporting? Uh, one person would support. Okay. So... Yeah, because such would probably take it. Take it, okay. Uh, and we still have five momentum, right? So I can use one of them? Yep. Oh, uh, yes. Control plus engineering. And focus of covert technology, right? That would be one of them, yep. And there's your three successes. 
and uh, Randy's assisting here, right? Yep. Okay. Ops officer. So, I'll also make an engineering roll here. Okay. Sensor operations counts as a focus, considering we're building a tracker. Yeah. A uh, gadgetry. <laughs> gadgetry yep. as well. Either or. And there's one more momentum. So there's that. Get it back. Got it back. It's a fairly small thing that's created, a uh, wafer thin, and fits on the inside of one of the of one of the water barrels. Um, it communicates via a um, a dead, uh, it ah, emits a very specific infra or um, X-ray sp or very specific signal on the X-ray spectrum, which their sensors don't appear to track all that well. Nice. And I was just going to paint one of them a different color. <laughs> well, as long as it uh, blends in with the barrel here. And... Bright pink. <laughs> well, if, the, if it's a bright pink barrel, then, you know, if it if it fits, it ships. But yeah. it, it's going to make sure it gets there to its destination. So this will probably be handed over to Cassatt right now and placed on the barrel. Okay. Placed on the barrel indeed. So let me get <clears throat> uh, the time comes and you guys enter the transporter room and without much ado, are you wearing dress uniform? I'd say so. I um, would think. Why not? Okay. And weapons. I'd definitely like say go ahead. Like the same dress, dress uniform from the night before. I mean, they can be cleaned. Make it be clean. You should well, replicate some new ones, dude. You spilled beer in it last night, yeah. dude. Come on. Well, not 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 like not Kassat. Kassat was very uh, very orderly. Oh, of course not. I'm talking. I'm talking to Bashir. Oh yeah, uh, that, guy, <laughs> that guy. He can't. Uh... Um. Yeah. <laughs> Romulan nail. Um. Romulan nail should be illegal. In any case, this it is. is not... <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Uh, in any case, we're ready to go. Um, remember, to, it's not primarily a mission, but we're still gathering intel. For the honor guard, you want them to go down with weapons, concealed phaser ones, or it's, nothing? It's, I'd say, um, yeah, no, con concealed phasers, but of course, uh, let them let them be alerted. We're not going to beam in and just surprise them with weapons since they didn't beam on board with any. So as long as we're letting, we're still being, the only thing that we're emitting is obviously, you know, the tracker and the barrel. Everything else that's that's beaming down right here is thing that we are confirming with uh, the Imperator. Okay. Uh, the Do you want us to have weapons? Or no. just security? Okay. I was going to say security. that would be awkward. Okay. Just a bit awkward, yes. Okay. This is the first time we haven't used combat armor. Might be. Or purloined it, or purloined enemy armor. That's true. Yes. I was thinking about Hello. that too. Our two security guards, like that, are going down as our yeah. honor guard. Where's their armor? Uh, whoops. <laughs> oh, right. they're dead. Indeed. All right. Uh, you materialize in a f large courtyard, uh, surrounded on all sides by looky loos. Um, and near, close by, is a platform that has been. Uh, erected for just such an occasion. Uh, the city itself is uh, fairly clean with very sharp angles as described in the picture here. Um, the orange sun glow uh, casts a baleful color through the sky <clears throat> and casts very long shadows. Uh, the first thing you realize is uh, you're gasping for breath the second you materialize. Uh, this planet's oxygen level is much thinner than you're used to, but your Starfleet training allows you to adapt fairly quickly. Uh, standing in front of you is the f uh, four bodyguards again, and this time a female. Um, she's uh, f 
stands fairly she stands tall uh her skin is radiant neon uh, with white patches along her forehead and she is wearing a very regal if somewhat revealing gown that drape that s stops just above the ground uh in a very well designed um a very well designed pattern whoever their their seamstress is is a very talented individual and she speaks captains and fellow crew of the federation welcome to my pla welcome to the planet of the vitars imperium and our capital city of desray and there is a thunderous applause from everyone around um there are several flashes as cameras and camera drones take pictures of you from 360 degrees and your security guards or quote unquote honor guard flex and instinctively reach for their phasers only to real uh come to a halt instantly as they realize that you're not actually being shot at well i turn back and i just say smile and wave smile and wave uh, royal wave <laughs> yeah. They're gonna do the uh, princess, the princess wave. Absolutely, turn at the wrist, nothing else. Mm. And thank you very much, my loyal citizens, for attending this first uh, meeting of the Federation and Vax or and Vitars in what will most likely be a glorious alliance for the future. Now, please resume your duties. And very orderly, uh, the crowds disperse, leaving only leaving the Imperator's female form, uh, four bodyguards, and several other regular armored individuals just keeping an eye on various checkpoints. Uh, she stalks forward on her lengthy legs and... Uh, Captain, Lieutenant Commander, Commander Bashir... I'm afraid I don't recognize you. As uh, she looks at uh, Zod and Kassot, which actually rhymes. That's hilarious. <laughs> As intended. Indeed. Please, if you'll accompany me on board my uh, limousine, we'll head to the palace. Certainly. <clears throat> it's a stretch limo uh, with hover technology, of course. Uh, very roomy will fit Imperator, her bodyguards, and all of you with much room to spare. And I figure, Captain, we will take the leisurely approach, if that is acceptable to you. Fine. It gives us a lot of chance to discuss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the city itself stretches several kilometers in all directions. Uh, you, you came close to the radius of the city or the center of the radius, I should say. Um, Bill, um, the building architecture does not stray much from what you have currently seen, even further out where one would expect slums and uh, low-cost housing. It doesn't seem to change all that much. The dwellings may get a little more compact, but far less than one would expect from any major city on Earth, say. Uh, she's quick to point out all the sites. Um, the and she talks about several different um, matriarchs and business partners and military heroes. And if any, if you'd like to ask any questions, now would be the time. Well, I'll go ahead and segue into, uh, especially when she starts talking about the parks. Just saying, you know, spending so much time in space as we did. You know, a lot of us are from you know, high, highly forested and also agricultural world. Earth is most definitely one of them. And it's been a long time since we were able to be in any large amount of, like, open space. I mean, I noticed that uh, your moon is terraformed, is it not? Yes, that is correct. Uh, several large geothermal spikes were planted into the core to keep it um, seismically active. And from there, we were able to produce enough oxygen to grow the first plants. 
which further in which further increased the carbon carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, which further improved the oxygen levels it took several uh, generations but we have a thriving agricultural uh, center I'd be more I'd be more than happy to allow you access to it however I must uh, that does come with the warning that it is a very ecologically um, balanced zone so in order to ensure that in order to prevent uh, economical or ecological collapse we do have to restrict access to some parts I'm, I'm sure you understand of course and your your betazoid senses is definitely picking up that there's a she's not telling the whole truth well I'm not gonna press into it for now the closest thing that we can do is just get there and see what happens next mm -hmm. um, I should I should ask or add for the state of uh, completeness in case you're wondering what happened to the rain barrels that's what I was just going to ask. <laughs> yeah. um, they were picked up, and the uh, Imperator—they were picked up in a separate um, guard vehicle, and the Imperator ordered them delivered to the palace, where they will be split among those who attend the welcoming feast this evening. Well, I mean that takes care of that, at least for the for the moment. Hmm. And in any case. Um... As long as, you know, eventually we'll be able to end up there on the moon, then hey, okay. As long I'm going to ask the Imperator, you know, specifically, um, I wouldn't mind touring it, but would you also permit me and, like, a little bit of shore leave? Not necessarily an extended stay in the plant on the moon surface. Like I said, we are definitely kind of tired of being cooped up on the ship for so long. And although our recreational centers have, are adequate, they don't necessarily compare to a uh, being on the planet. Uh, she barks in a in a laugh. I suspect we can find a beach that you would find accommodating, Captain. Again, such shore leave or investigative activities will have to be monitored, of course, because this you are. While our first meeting appears to be going splendidly, well, we are. We have survived attacks for several years and are cautious of outsiders. I certainly would be the same. After all, it is a good meet. This is our first meeting, and I wouldn't put it past you at all. I would. I would do the same. She nods silently. As the. Uh... Uh, she the car reaches the edge of the city and over the green alkali um, salt lakes or salt ocean I should say captain uh, welcome to the uh, the Elonius sea it's n not much compared to some of the larger or um, uh, more habitable habitable worlds on the that we have encountered in our time but we do our best to ensure that it stays as pristine as possible and she's right. There's no sign of any any uh, shipping, or much many boats larger than what would be called what could be recreational pleasure craft. Um, the and she uh, it continues to fly off to the far side of the lake, and you will all fly over top of this building. Nope, that's the throne room. You'll get there eventually. Uh, nope, here, there. On the far side of the continent, she brings you to this massive building. Um, it is a, <coughs> it's lar It's about the size of a scale 8 ship. Um, massive in size, and several... Um, uh, a lot of the water is, or a lot of the lower levels appear to be a form of liquid of some sort. Uh, Captain, it gives me great pleasure to show you the greatest treasures of the Vitaris Imperium, uh, the Eternity Research Group's headquarters. It is here that mo many of our bodies are manufactured and uh, grown to s the specifications. Your, um, the, the grat that you so uh, so graciously brought back to us. 
His uh, new body is being processed here, and he'll be ready to go within another two days. And she beams with absolute pride. So do you keep the DNA on file, or is it like, do you have clone bodies ready to go? Or how does your processing work? It depends on the level of subscription, of course. <coughs> um, if For those who are able to afford a, uh, a premium level of service, we can have a fresh... We have... We, we always have one body ready for um, insert for activation as soon as we receive the uh, note for as bad bad I'm sorry we've lost the ability to speak as soon as we have received the um, termination s- signal from their previous host um, they can be up and running again within an hour literally for ps- those who wish to have a who can't afford such a perk eh, they still they will have a body grown within seven days as you can as you can probably tell i am a uh i am naturally a high uh i subscribe to the highest level of uh bodies if this body were to expire when i get tired of it which might be tonight might be before dinner who knows I will have a new one ready. To, I will have a new one ready to go within moments. Now, are you the head of the corporation? Uh, I wish. Well, I ha- I was given the option to nationalize it, and I can at any moment. However, I believe that some level of autonomy must hap- must exist between the two s- powers of this great imperium. And believe me, this is the Eternity Research Group is a power. I see. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. I control the milit. I control the military and uh, command the populace, and they ensure that uh, the Eternity Research Group ensures that I continue to have a populace. Um. Will we meet the CS, the CEO, at the uh, the banquet? Banquet? Of course. You, I will. I look forward to introducing you, and perhaps, well, perhaps we can see if one of you is uh, compatible with the process procedure. <laughs> I'm not Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Just as I'm getting ready to say something too, but I don't mean to be forward. But is this you mentioned about the attorney research providing you a populace? Is this the only means for uh, reproduction and to keep the species going? Uh, the captain, uh, you feel a sl- uh, you feel a slight ping of sadness uh, from her. It's n- no. Uh, we, most of our species is still very capable of procreation through natural means. However, it, the one down, one of the downsides of basic immortality is the lack of drive to s- continue one's lineage in such a fashion. Most will do so at some point in their elongated lives, but alas, our birth rates have dropped significantly thank you very much the rest of the continent that the that the Imperator uh, flies over is a series of mining towns uh, small cities uh, based along what appear to be um, old trade routes and she is espouses some of her history that she has obviously memorized at this stage in her life. Um, she points out where she b- was was born oh so many lifetimes ago. And it doesn't appear all that different from any other small town where one would expect a shrine or something. Um, the, the mountains are fairly low compared to 
even Earth standards, well worn over the millennia of uh, geological change. Um, planetary science by now would have reached you that this, uh, because this sun is a much older star than that of Sol, or Sol, however you pronounce it, uh, it stands to reason that this planet has been around far longer as well. Hmm. And with this, Captain, I bring you, or with this, my new friends, I introduce, I bring you to the bank, the, ah, uh, I bring you to the palace. And the clean, um, at first glance, um, the epicenter of the massive city of Disray is a large building that doesn't appear out of dis, or, nah, too different from the skyline in general. Uh, clean insa, uh, clean cut, polished white. The only thing that marks it different is a statue of one of the Imperator's bodies, hard to tell which one, standing about four or five stories tall made of uh, pure gold and as soon as you step inside the interior changes significantly um, gone is the oh, that's the wrong japeler this is the right one uh, gone is the clean lines and in is more of the classic gothic gothic style style oh, that was loud um, Sorry about that. So, and this would be the throne room here. Uh, there is that silly fanfare playing uh, as a Jap Japler uh, sets foot inside, and all uh, all inside immediately snap to attention. And she gives them a quick wave, and they immediately smoothly head back to their original duties. Hmm. Well, let me be the first to say, or if I have not already said it before, that this, well, you definitely have a fantastic and great culture that you guys have been able to build for yourselves over the years. I, it's, it's, the, to witness this beauty, especially, is honestly breathtaking. Ah, uh, she smiles sincerely. It has been difficult at times, I have to admit. However, uh, we are very pleased to have, uh, uh, it has been hard work and sacrifice of many lives, because not everyone was able to be fully restored in the early years against the Borg. But many lives were sacrificed, and much has been accomplished in uh, rebuilding our empire. And I have to admit, it would not have been possible if it wasn't for Starfleet and the Federation brokering a truce between us and the Togalau. Their understanding them has been um, almost a divine blessing from the ne bloody Nebula herself. And... Uh, Sengral, at this point in time, you do feel a bit of a, sort of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Not anger per se, bitterness, probably, uh, at mention of the alliance between them and the Togalau. But it's gone very quickly. Well, I'd actually like to uh, press into that a little bit and just mention that. Well, of course, uh, the Federation itself is, definitely has a variety of diplomatic functions, and the last thing we want to see, or, ha, or neither help facilitate us, is war. So we're happy to be, you know, a third party, to be able to attempt to arbitrate your conflict. But, you know, on that same moment, I must ask, I mean, since the Togolau are so most definitely, or so dependent upon forestry and just uh, vegetation in general. How exactly does that affect the Imperium itself, especially when, you know, you have all these satellite planets with each of each of them having their own, I'm sure, uh, different areas of uh, ag agriculture, along with your uh, citizen population, along with its architecture. 
um, she uh, claps her she claps her hands with glee um, in rapid succession. Captain, that's the beautiful part. The Togalau bel now that the Togalau have formed sentience or have talked with a group of them that contain sentience and learned it. I don't know. Zena, their society is strange. But it seems that they're not native to this sector of space. And somehow, now that they've achieved this level of intelligence, that's unlocked their ability to go home. Uh, it's quite amazing. Once they've reached so much um, <laughs> rescued material, I guess, of their garden, whatever they call themselves, they form their own spaceship and fly away. It's quite a process. Uh, you should... Re if you, on your way back to the Bloody Nebula, I recommend that you take a quick pit stop at X and watch them in pro in progress. Uh, it's my understanding that world is almost fully cleansed and we can move on to the next one. Do you know exactly to where they're flying when they make these living ships of themselves? Uh, she shrugs and says, I can't. So long as it's not in Vitar space, I really don't care. I'll ha I can have one of my military advisors get, send you the whatever information they have. And she nods off to uh, one of her uh, seneschals who quickly makes a note. I nod my head. So considering um, at this point, even though I am being quite pleasant, along with my empathic abilities and mm -hmm. my ability with pattern recognition, I'd like to see me be able if I could do some sort of presence command check to just see if I could identify any of her tells right now. Sure. And what they, exactly they may be leading to. Uh, probably insight command, I would think. Okay. Uh, difficulty oh. of two. After all, she's been an Imperator for some time. There you go. Um, so she's very good at putting on a diplomatic face. Um, and she uses her... You can tell that she's using her feminine wiles a bit to attempt to distract the di distract you as best she can. Um, but there is a rigidness and controlledness behind her. Um, she definitely uh, sees the Vitaris Imperium as standing alone, and that the. Um, truce or treaty between them and the Togalau is not one that uh, she is it's, it's not one that she likes but understands its necessity um, they're a very um, stalwart culture I guess is the best word way to put it uh, does that answer your question? it does excellent uh, so now everyone else is standing around quietly um, Captain do you wish your officers to explore? I can, as I can assign guides if you'd like them to go out and explore. My, my whole, my, the city of Desray is open to all. We have nothing to hide here. Well, I most definitely appreciate that, but I think for now, you definitely want to keep this together. Okay. If that's if that's all right with you. What's up? And she nods. Um, okay, so quick chat on what folks are doing. Um, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, anything that you'd like to do, say, ask, or look for? Um, just following the captain's lead here. Um, do we get ready to make a break? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not so that. Because <laughs> he said keep everybody together. I was getting up and then just sitting back down again. <laughs> I don't want to separate a party with a bunch of uh, body hopping uh, retires here, especially when we're in their their chairs. Mm -hmm. That seems like a really bad idea to me. <laughs> don't split the landing party. I. Uh, uh, Zot is Zot going to be looking at anything? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, um, Captain's going to stick around. Uh, Lieutenant Cassot. Uh, Kassat is going to 
stay in place and make sure to do nothing to jeopardize his chances of um, being sent on another way mission to spend less time with the chief engineer. <laughs> Very Vulcan of you. Uh, Lute Kassat, your um, tricorder is continuously just getting updates with the location of the uh, pallet. And you do detect that the pallet is roughly um, 50 feet below you. So probably in one of the kitchens or warehouses or something. Okay. Um, Commander Bashir? Um, trying to follow the captain's lead, but I wouldn't mind moseying around a little bit around the guards and kind of just taking this whole thing in and maybe being subtle and seeing if I can get another note. <laughs> okay, to be clear, uh, just to clarify, I don't want the I don't want the party to. You guys are free to explore the actual palace. Oh, okay. At least in general, but you can, I don't want you to go out and, into the city, which is what I meant. Let me just. Gotcha. Okay. Funny. I thought we're all stabbed in here. Like, no, oh, I yeah. understand that's a little bit. <laughs> okay. Not quite as clear don't and pretty restrictive. <laughs> that's not what I. That's not what I intended. You guys could explore the palace. Just when she said the city was open to you, don't go out into the streets because you know keep you guys keep each other in eyesight. Mm -hmm. To the best of your ability, or at least keep in close cut range. Kids, you can't leave the palace. Yeah. <laughs> take a take a buddy with you. We're doing the buddy. Yeah. Well, Does the so... count as a buddy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely like to take a look around and do some scanning and just kind of. I mean, this palace is gorgeous. So. Okay. Are uh, there? But any yes, type of... I. I am trying to Go kind ahead. of see if I can get uh, a note again or something from the guards. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll get back to what you find shortly. Uh, Helsing. Sure. Are there any type of uh, paintings, murals, anything like that along the walls? Uh, Statues, reliefs? Um, there's... Um, I just kind of start walking up to one. Okay. Um, they appear to be uh, famous military commanders. Uh, well, sorry, I should clarify. On one side is famous military commanders, and on one side is famous uh, civilians who have contributed in some way to Vitar's culture. <clears throat> um, they do their best. Uh, each one makes a mention of um, attempting to capture the essence of their current body for when they were honored with such the with such an award. Um, so, for example, there are several who led uh, historic combat against, or uh, vicious combat against the Borg, and have survived, and referencing various battles of however long ago. It doesn't seem to mention a lot of casualties, but from your experience, Borg leave casualties. So. Are these hyper realistic? Paintings more abstract. They are, um, they're as close to Renaissance style paintings as possible. So they're oil, oil style, more mostly realistic art style. So um, anything to gather from the type of board they were mm. fighting. Sorry. Yeah. If you can glean anything tactics or yeah. weapon wise from what they have to what they use now yep. that we've seen uh, so the Borg they're fighting slightly more primitive than what you have encountered but not terribly uh, think more of the next generation style of Borg than first contact or Voyager so a bit clunkier uh, still using energy weapons uh, the Vitars were seen to be fighting with uh, solid projectile weapons as from your uh, tactical uh, training, obviously they do far better against the Borg adaptive shielding than energy weapons do. And yeah, you can s uh, various um, armies are you know the the paintings are almost always pictured with the Vitars at the fore and the uh, Borg in the rear, like to the back of the painting, obviously showing biased. Or bias. Roger. All right. Uh, Kassat, 
now that you've been given leave to wander around, anything you'd like to do? Nope, that's a, that's a trick. I'm not I'm not falling for that. Okay. Not not going anywhere. Take a cigarette to the captain and making sure the captain knows I'm the perfect person to take on future away missions. Very well. Um, okay, so Commander Bashir, you are wandering around anywhere in particular? Like I said, I'm just kind of wandering around doing some scanning. Nah, uh, okay. you know, just investigating, scanning, looking around. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to leave myself fairly open as the uh, guinea pig. <laughs> no. uh, you do. It's off. It's fairly obvious from the get go that you have a shadow. Uh, two Vitar security or royal bodyguards are following you at every at a respectable distance, but they are definitely keeping an eye on you. Um, you do not get any more notes, or, or or do you or do you encounter who you think might have been contact Alpha? I would have no way of knowing which yeah. one because you said the armor's identical, but yeah, um, just basic readings from around the room and stuff, without being too obtrusive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, your uh, your scans indicate a significant number of hidden weapons batteries um, that could quickly turn this uh, could quickly turn any room into a kill box if need be. But they are all high, hidden behind frescoes, statues, or chandeliers. I'm going to go ahead and calm uh, a <laughs> security officer and just let him know that he'll find just... something very interesting over here. Yeah, Liam leans into a, one of the frescoes to kind of look real close. <laughs> it's probably one that lights up on your sensor. <laughs> yeah. So the party will be will commence moment uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the first course is the rainwater that has been graciously brought by Captain Luxor Arthur uh, Sangral of the uh, of the uh, Federation, and a goblet of clear liquid is passed around, or passed to each person. <clears throat> um, the Imperator raises it, and she says, "To future friends." And we'll down it in an instant. I think I almost forgot. <laughs> so, uh, Zod is definitely going to, because I'm pretty sure I'm piloting her, uh, is going to take out her tricorder and uh, scan just to make sure that this is this is still safe to consume and it hasn't been tampered with because it's not like we're doing anything like that. No, sir. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, I have enough momentum. Nope. The, the water is crystal clear. And with no extra additives since when it left the ship. Well, in any case, well, partake in the ceremony, everyone. Smile and wave. Cheers. Yeah. Um, and this is perf where I'm more than willing to bring the scene to a close, unless anyone has anything else they wish to do. This is course one. We're moving on to the next courses, or, uh, or do we all pass out from what was? In yeah, the we all wake up in prison. No, I, as much as I'd like to, I don't have enough uh, threat stored now to do a, a reversal. So, the scene is just going to be you guys partying into the night, and then next. Okay. Uh, next so morning. What is the CEO? What before you oh. go? Oh, what do you? What is the CEO like? I apologize. I, I would like to have you know meet the CEO of the company. I apologize. Since they almost have more power than the emperor. I do apologize. Where oh where did I put their token? I don't think I actually uploaded it. Well, that's me being silly. Anyways, okay, we'll just uh, use one of these instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will use this token because I like it. <clears throat> okay. Just let me add the name. <clears throat> Do 
Director Zafflin of the Eternity Research Group um, is a fairly jo j jolly fellow. <clears throat> um, he appears to be actually much older than many of the others present. Um, his uh, skin is showing uh, blotted age marks where his where it's losing the um, I think the term is melatonin and his skin is getting uh, pl splotchy white and starting to sag around the um, areas on the forehead where the where the bony ridges are protruding <clears throat> as he's downing whatever alcoholic beverage he can get his hands on he is more than happy to talk to anyone about anything and you'd better believe he has lived it he says that he is well over 400 years old but don't let anyone else tell don't let anyone try to tell you differently I would like to subtly mention like ask him about like the process and you know how the corporation works uh, well it's it's quite simple you, you realize you see there's the medulla uh, ah there's the medulla oglis part of the brain that store on our uh, biology that stores all of the memories of who we currently are and it was a theory put forth maybe a century ago maybe a bit more that memory that all a person is is their memories and so we attempted to try that the first experiments were organic and apparently rather icky but eventually the theory proved true for us we were able to effectively cut out the medulla oglis from our from a dying host and plant it into a clone shell for lack of a better term it was not pretty and the results weren't perfect but eventually the we were able to digitize the person digitize the memories and the personality and once we were able to do that he turns around and taps his uh, forehead where there's a data port it became much easier to upload and download without all the messy surgery you only have to do it once a body is built or you know reaches the age of maturity he lets out a small sigh at that <clears throat> becoming less and less fewer and fewer people are maturing well fewer people being born i suppose i guess that means our I guess that means we don't have to worry as much about overpopulation as we feared, right? Right? Uh, apparently, yes. Um, not to get into a debate, but I'm curious, like, as a scientist, I'm curious, like, what is your spirituality on... I've studied many cultures and, you know, the Klingons go to Salvacor and so on, and humans have a heaven. What about the spirit of the body? Mm. There are some traditions that venerate the passing of a spirit from one body to the other, one body to the next. It's, uh, we used to have, um, ceremonies celebrating a person's life when they died now those ceremonies have turned into a ceremony for new life and new possibilities um, if you're referring to an afterlife those have drifted away for the most part there are those of course who choose not to to partake in our services and I suppose those people might be a little more religious but I they don't pay me money so I don't give much of a hoot about them um, <laughs> how, between you and me of course and he gives a theatrical wink as if sharing an inside joke that everyone already knows the punchline for of course we do have to give a significant num amount of our earnings to in taxes because after all we are a private business and business must pay taxes to the throne it is only patriotic that we do so interesting have you tried other species besides your own for this transference we have met a, 
there are records of um, a few others that we'd met before the Borg invaded. Um, however, they were our biological study of them was not very thorough. If they were to volunteer for the for a thorough gen, genealogical and biological study, we would th be very interested. In fact, uh, Commander, I'm very interested to see what's beneath that blue brain of yours, or blue skull of <laughs> yours. Is your brain also blue? <laughs> My blood is, yes. I bleed blue. Fascinating. Well, one final question for you. Have you tried this process on the Borg? Heavens no. The Borg proved the few samples that we cap that we found there was too much destroyed or corrupted by their technology. Uh, the, I see. Also, it seems that the Borg had taken from many, many different races. Uh, I don't really understand how their process works. I'm sure I have a couple scientists that know more about that stuff, but all I know is that the Borg were incompatible, let's say. Well, I thank you so much for this wonderful discussion. It's a pleasure, Commander. And please, let me know if you're interested in a new body. For uh, I under If you are unable to pay in our currency, I'm sure we could work out a deal. And he laughs and immediately turns his back to you, grabs a fresh goblet of wine from a passing serving girl, and goes and flirts with um, a pair of Vitaris females. <laughs> ah. Okay. Anyone do wish to do anything else at this t time or place? Well, I've covered most of the ground that I wanted to. Um, if anybody else wants to jump in, that's on them. Doesn't sound like it. Okay, then we are going. I'm good. To... All right, then we are going to cut to the moon. I'm not sure if. Uh... Did you want to jump in, Helsing? No, no, no. I was good. All right. Okay, okay we are. Oh, that's the wrong one. This is the right one. We are going to cut to the moon, and I. Due to computer problems, I was unable to get a good scene for the moon itself, so we're just going to have to zoom in really, really closely and call that good. So, the moon um, you have discovered is named um, uh, uh, Illus. <clears throat> New Earth? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> All right, and you are given. Uh, let's see. You notice that your escorts have uh, mostly th uh, thinned out. However, there's still one Sparham cruiser that is sticking around just in case. You are given um, a coordinates of a beach that is uh, nearer to the uh, northern portion of this particular planet or moon, I should say. <clears throat> and it is uh, Lieutenant or Lieutenant Commander Kinor advises you that it is far more habitable than the planet Vax itself, and that you should be able to go down without any additional triox compounds in your blood. Well, that's good to know. Uh, if there's no other uh, biological preparations that we need to prepare, mm -hmm. let's make sure we have the ability to surveil these coordinates that were given to us as best as we could okay uh so a more thorough and uh description of the planet below is it is mostly it is almost one half land one half water um whether that's intended or just how the geology works it's unclear at this stage however you do see that there are uh several um metal uh, columns that have been injected straight into the earth um, and uh, heating it with uh, extreme temperatures to keep the planet or the moon seismically active which in turn then allows it to stay more or less alive um, most of the land is covered with agriculture so crops uh, rivers uh, orchards that sort of thing except for one island which is 
in the middle, the middle of the ocean. Uh, it's purely forest. <clears throat> and very little traffic appears to go in and out of it. And if, uh, and if asked during the party, it would be, um, you would have received the information that it is a, a nature preserve. Uh, where sometimes the, where certain uh, biologists or ecologists are granted permission to study it, but for the most part, they are not, or it is not permitted to access it. Ah, uh, yeah, to access it. Let's say that. So I'm assuming that includes us. Yes, you. That does include you. You do not have yeah, permission. I just... So, to be clear, um, they are specific coordinates that we do have, right? On on the moon, it's just not, we weren't just told um, to go to the moon. Uh, you were told to go to the forest section of the moon. The forest section of the moon. It's fairly obvious from the geology that there is only one area of that is actual forest or jungle whereas the rest of them is mostly um agriculture or controlled areas i should say um as much as we don't want to split the landing party i feel like we need to maintain appearances i would i'm thinking coordinating with Lieutenant Commander Helsing here. That is probably the best if we either beam, not at the same time, but either shortly afterwards, whether it's from the Nighthawk or from our shuttlecraft, as long as we're able to be able to hide that uh, that transport in progress uh, towards the forest part of the moon there, uh, just sending an away team there specifically just just investigate on their own time. So, That's the first plan of attack that I have right now. Simultaneous transporters. That's a good idea. Well, I wasn't really thinking simultaneous. Oh. I mean, if, if oh, it, I think if that's... Can't... Go ahead. No, I was going to say I like the simultaneous because then the two be... they Our technology is better than theirs, so they might not be able to pick up that we're sneakily teleporting a group to the other one. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it makes the most sense to do it at the same time. I just wasn't quite sure um, whether or not, wh whether it was coming from the Nighthawk or from a shuttle or one of our uh, shuttlecraft or regardless of it, whatever method it is best to obscure um, this pattern going in, that's the same time we should go, we should send that away team there. Okay. Okay, so who is going on the beach, quote unquote, mission? But the only thing you'll have to fight is the sun's UV rays. Well, the captain's prerogative, of course. <laughs> well, awesome. I think They're... that, yeah, they would look for you. Exactly, they'd look for me. Yeah, and maintain appearances, of course, so I have to be there. Okay, uh, so we are going to put the captain over here. Since we didn't lean on uh, Commander Health really loving, uh, wanting to go roam around in wild open spaces, they're not exactly expecting him. So, I mean, he can, I think it's definitely paramount that he goes there to the forested area. Um, we didn't stand any supporting character like geologist or anything of the, of the kind yet. Uh, so we don't have any of those, I don't think. I don't think... I mean, uh, Vault Rani has experience with mining equipment and needs an activation, so... Well, that's as good a reason as any. Well... Unless she already also has... Is, I've already... I was going to say, I'm not sure how much of a public figure I am, but I have uh, xenobiology, xenobotany. So... I was going to say, botany be, would be big, but we could use an engineer, too. No, I mean, it makes the most sense for you to be there with the away mission, with the away team, rather. And so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bolster this forested area with, uh, I don't know, I really feel like the Shran should go on the away mission, too. But at the same time, I, 
I need people here for rest and relaxation. So how about this? We'll take uh, Bashir, Tashran, Helsing, and uh, the rest of the supporting characters that you'd like to have on file. And at least for the other miscellaneous members of the crew that work in their specific departments, I'll take them down for a combination of a uh, rest and relaxation, first contact, and shore leave. Okay. Um, how much time would we have between leaving the dinner banquet and doing this insertion? It's been a, it's been at least a day. Could we have replicated um, armor suits like the uh, Royal Guard had? Oh. Um, yeah. yeah, if if you'd like to do that, you could do that. Um, I will. I will take uh, threat because you know taking that sort of stuff gives me threat. But yeah, I I I, I don't know. I think we just go in. No. <sighs> Trying to figure some way to stay as incognito as we could. That's up to the captain. Well, I mean, really, I mean, you're in charge of away missions in general. I'm just here to suggest. That's what I was going to say. Do you think we should wear armor or just go in? I think it's something that you should bring along as a precaution, most definitely. Okay. All right. Tucking tuck back those antenna again. If you, I, don't think right. the, I don't think the entire away uh, team should uh, have armor. Maybe one or two of the security officers being there in armor, and the rest of you could be used potentially as an escort. There you I go. Got normal armor? Or no, that could the... work. There you okay, go. so we're not going incognito then. Okay, so so if we if we go down if they go down in the armor they could say that they're protecting us or while we were given permission to, you know, take samples. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Yeah, uh, uh, be careful. That's, <laughs> that's how you want to play it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so we don't have to tuck antenna. Yeah, tuck the antenna. Remember, you're not supposed to be there in the first place, so if you actually are discovered, you got to make sure, no matter what you say to these guards, whoever you may encounter, that they're not there to go say that we were there in the first place. So whatever whatever you come up with, you got to make sure that they don't go, they don't, you don't leave a calling card. I thought this was the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was the wrong turn. <laughs> then we tell them the sob story about the trees. <laughs> so... Other places we've had um, disruptions where teleporting in and out was going to be difficult. But this looks like a a clean in and out. Don't need any pattern enhancers or. That's what it appears to be. There are uh, the the only life signs you're picking up are those of creatures. So not much in the way of other individuals. Not much, and maybe one or two Vitar's life signs, but that's about it. How big are these creatures? Uh, without getting a full-on look at them, uh, they appear to be around the size of gorillas. The largest Here ones are. Anyways. White with horns. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> this is not D&D. Although it is a good source of inspiration. Oh, I meant the one that Kirk fought. Oh, the, like, oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the... All right. Okay, so. I have this vision in my head of the Bionars with sunglasses and lawn chairs. And... <laughs> it can still happen. I like that we're doing that. Okay, Bionars are going <laughs> with the captain. <clears throat> okay, so um, Helsing, Bashir, Shras, and Loxley are heading on to the forest. Am I missing anyone? Nah, small team. Cool. And everyone else, anyone who wants to go, goes on the beach. Okay. Okay, so, Commander. Uh, actually, I'm going to have a transporter check for this. So, Chief Zell is going to need to roll me some transporter stuff. Copy. Uh, we are going to go to the transport. I'm going to bring pattern enhancers along just in case. Okay, that's fair. Those in there. 
So it goes there. Okay. So if someone could please roll a check for Zell. Chief Zell. This would be a control plus engineering. Uh, ship can assist with sensors plus engineering. And this will be a diff. Um, this will be a difficulty of three tasks. I'll spend some threat to increase the threat to. Normally would be two, but I'm increasing it to three. Due to some I'll threat. do Zell. Okay. Um, all right. I'll sort of. I spend a momentum to boost it up. Please. Engineering. Okay. And obviously he has a focus for transport systems. Mm -hmm. And there's your three. Right. Who wants um, to do a ship? Yep, someone uh, can roll a ship. Got the ship up. Um, okay. And what would it? Uh, sensors plus sensors. engineering. In Burn one of them. Uh, it'll, you'll need to spend two momentum to cancel that complication. Yeah, might as well. I think we should do it. Yeah, burn it, burn it, burn it. Okay. I'd rather not have a complication. So you you're down more. to... Yeah, so you had four, so you're up to five, and then you're down to three now. I think, in the interest of fairness, since we forgot to minimize them during scene change, I think we're kind of just out of momentum at this point. Yeah, I guess it's the true. Moon... It is a scene change. Yeah, Moon would have oh. counted a scene change. Yeah, let's say that you're at two momentum now. Yeah. That sounds accurate. Close enough, anyways. <clears throat> okay. Um, the transporter effect takes much longer than you're used to. Um, you sort of flicker, and you hear the ghost, or you hear the Chief Zell's voice in your <coughs> head, sort of as a ghost's voice for a split second. Well, this is peculiar. <clears throat> yeah, things mm. are resolving, but they're not. Stand by, and uh, you materialize. Uh, you materialize. That's on the uh, top ten things you don't want to hear as you're transporting. Yeah. Right. You materialize here. And we're in Vex bodies. <laughs> uh, you materialize on a, a metal roof which is the first sign that something's gone kind of screwball. Um, the whole place reeks of urine um, and various pollutants. Uh, you look up and you don't see the sky. No, you don't see any space at all. Just sort of a bleak gray monotone uh, sky. Um, there are indiv uh, there are individuals all around you. Uh, you take a quick look, and you realize two things. Well, three. One, they're Vitars. Uh, two, they look far haggard than any Vitars you've seen so far. Uh, wearing shabby clothing. Um, <clears throat> and just sort of bearing the countenance of beat down or mentally beat down individuals. And three, many of, there's a far higher adult to children ratio here than you have seen anywhere else on your travels. Far adult to children? Like, uh, sorry, the, um, the Vitars that you've, uh, the Vitar society that you've experienced, there have been very few children. Yes, yeah, so this would yeah. be the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So there's, so there's, children there's a lot there's of a, kids. A no. lot of kids, yes. Okay. Um, and Lo if I recall correctly, Loxley was wearing the armor, uh, the Vitars armor, or was I mistaken in that? We were going to have security. And and... Okay, so Helsing and Abrel were wearing the Vitars armor. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to roll me some dice. <clears throat> Okay. Let's see. Those miss. Those that'll hit. Those will hit, and those will hit. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a mm. crit, actually. I mean, it's not a hell. Of, it's not a heck of a lot, but let's see. Box is dead. 
Okay, um, you are being pelted by rocks and other small metal objects. Um, as th they begin to th um, yell um, various uh, curse words at you and begin to vent their general frustration at their um, Vitar's overlords or security goons or whatever other interesting names you can come up with for, you know, faceless, ah, faceless representatives of the man. Um, let's see. What what resistance does armor give you? I think it's two. So let's see. No, no. Yeah, uh, Loxley will... T Loxley takes two points of damage. The rest is sort of... As a lucky rock finds its way through... Or a particularly large piece of rock is hurled at her general direction, cracking the face shield. The rest sort of just harmlessly bounces off... Of armor okay right. so i'm going to like sit like stand down stand down <laughs> and like because obviously i'm assuming they've never seen anything like uh me and uh the shran so <laughs> basically like i stand up and antenna fully like up in the air just like hold on hold on the crowd sort of takes two steps back and the barrage of detritus comes to a stop. Uh, okay. Take, take off your helmets. Take the uh, helmet off, not to actually take... Well, hers is already cracked, so... Yeah. There's a shocked murmuring and muttering from all around as the... Um, parents move to sh or the adults move to shield the children from these individuals who have materialized in their midst uh, one of them steps who's yeah okay I was gonna say who's in charge <laughs> one of them steps forward and says I and in an overly grandiose voice says I bid you welcome to the place that the Vitaris would rather not exist. You may call me Chala. Chala, I am Commander Bashir of a Federation starship. He shrugs. I have no <laughs> idea what the what the Federation is or why you're blue. Why are you here? I well, thought this was a forest. <laughs> he laughed. And that's what the Vitars would like you to believe. So, um, as I say, can we get down <laughs> and talk? <laughs> he motions behind everyone to just take, take a few steps back. And as one, they lower their arms some look disappointed that they're unable to throw what they're currently holding. <laughs> but they acquiesce. I can't get the vision of uh, Monty Python and the whole <laughs> Grand, all of the villagers. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Burn witch. Burn them. <sighs> that does seem okay. to be... That was where I pulled this scene from, Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting in my... All right, so since we're on the roof, like I said, uh, let's just kind of get down and... <laughs> please, please, come and take sustenance with us in my grand palace. He literally points, and he points to what appears to be a shipping container that is half <laughs> rusted, but has a makeshift um, bed and a corner that appears to be where they do their biological waste. You don't want to ah. you don't want to deal with that corner, trust me. On his on his bed? No, it, the, the, the no other just corner. in the other corner. Oh, yeah. Just the other corner. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. You were expecting a uh, forest, I bet, weren't you? Yes, I was given information to investigate the forest. So 
we have come here to investigate the forest. Hmm. Well, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So, allow me to explain why we're here. You see, the Vitars Imperium has a ma has a one of their most holy might be the worst might not be the word for it, but most precious laws. They won't kill their own citizens. They do not have uh, the death penalty is deplorable. Don't get me wrong, they will happily send soldiers to their death now that they can be revitalized, reborn, rebuilt. However, there are several among us that have a biological mutation that makes us incompatible with their reprogramming technology. And so we are shuffled off here. Out of sight, out of mind. Would you like some water? And he passes you a glass of horrible smelling salt water. I'll drink it. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're, roll you're me brave. a roll I me... dropped a purification tab in mine. <laughs> that would be a smart idea. Uh, Bashir, please roll me a fitness plus medical test with a difficulty of two. Come on, baby. Work for me. <laughs> All right. This thing is putrid, and you cannot, your body cannot help to vomit it out in a technicolor spew of blues and greens. Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Your host, <laughs> Sma. Your host, just sort of. Uh, I wish you would have done that in the corner. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, takes a yeah, takes a soiled rag that has been used for far to clean up far worse, and mops up whatever you've just vomited onto the table. And you thought the Where dress you... Uni <laughs> and you thought the dress uniform was bad after the party. Oh. <laughs> Where do you get your water and your food? We have some contact. We have some friends in the agricultural sectors where, that are able to run smuggling operations. And, and that's just the basic sustenance? Yes, we don't get the good stuff. As for water, we have a f fairly simple purification system down at the, down at the ocean level. It's an evaporative... Uh, it's a primitive evaporation method doesn't make the best tasting of water but it's passable sir we got a good engineer i was gonna say i have a i have a very good engineer who could probably take a look at that but he's on the ship no no uh, no he's here oh are you, are no, you, are you trying to make a he's on the show. <laughs> i think he's trying to make a cassat joke yeah i think he's trying to make a yeah I'd stand right next to him and say, <clears throat> "I think uh, oh, he's here. I think you missed me." <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I forgot that you needed a, a disco ball to see by sometimes. It it helps. Uh, yeah. All right. Is the information that I found out about this forest was by one of the royal guards. Crazy. So I'm. Assuming you must have some higher connections. He raised an eyebrow. Huh. We've we've our movement has had sympathizers in the past, but for the most part, they've been found out and um, quashed during their next rebirth cycle. It pleases me actually that one might be within distance of the Imperator him, himself, herself, their self, itself. Whatever. It changes body so many bloody times, I don't even know you could call it Vitars anymore. I noticed that myself. 
Now, are you saying that when they transfer the bodies, they are actually genetically altering them every time? Genetically altering? No, Ka No, inf everything is digital. The brain path... It becomes very easy to tweak code once oh. it's in digital form. Sure. Yes, I... I've lost two of my sons that way before they found out I was incompatible and shipped me off here. He sighs. Look, are, please, tell me more about your federation. Is it a safe place to raise children? Do you actually get to see the sun? Yes, absolutely. We have many species and races, as you can see by my crew here. We all live in harmony where no one goes hungry or... I see. Uh, to, to some extent, that's true. Yes. Case all, and he yells to an individual nearby, uh, please take the blue engineer down to check out our pumps and filters maybe we can get things working a little better as i say yeah Thran, see what you can do yep right, do you want to take loxley with you sure okay loxley will head out um, look. he um once they leave and the cr he motions the crowd to disperse a bit So you can just openly attack members of the Royal Guard or they just don't come here. And if they come here, it's open season on them. They were, there's a lot of anger and frustration. For the most part, we're left alone. Um, very, very rarely do people show up. And when they do, it's only to deposit off. It's only to drop off more incompatible individuals mostly children these days they've gotten very good at finding the mutations early it's quite disgusting that explains the large number large of children, number here. children. Mm -hmm. yeah. can we I don't want to risk beaming again to bring them some food can Oh, can I uh, try my combat? Uh, sure. Um, it's a captain. Bit... Oh, oh yeah. you're talking to the captain. Um, captain, you're having a sunny day at the beach. Um, some of your uh, members of your crew have uh, pulled, have uh, found a volleyball net and have begun a impromptu game of volleyball. Uh, the binars are currently the pair to beat, surprisingly enough. Perhaps because yes. their tactical formations are almost perfect. <laughs> the Pyronars took Toddy yeah. down, yeah. and he's on the beach. <laughs> I am most definitely frustrated, but I'm trying to hide it as best as possible. And I'm adopting the same strategy as we did when we took the Vax, which is just smile. <laughs> Instead of saying uh, set, and, set and spike, do they just go one and zero? Oh, they probably don't even... Ooh. They probably don't even need to say that. Uh, <laughs> Captain, your comm badge beeps. Well, I go ahead and uh, pick it up from uh, from off to the side. And I just say, this is Sengrel. Captain, we have a prime directive issue. <laughs> um, everything is not what it seems to be. And what? I'll give him a quick rundown of like, the conditions and what they're doing and all that stuff, so I don't have to repeat everything I were just learned. Well, I'd like to remind uh, you that our mission there was still to gather intelligence and exactly figure out what was going on. Now that that's been established, you're still not allowed to interfere in any way, shape, or form. Minimize your presence to the best as possible. I understand you wanting to help these people with the best of your intentions, but we can't do that right now. The situation is still too new and it's still too volatile. However, if you do want to give them some sort of modicum of satisfaction and 
keep it keep it to a very 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 low minimum but as soon as you the more actions the more actions you take the m- more it you risk detection true all right captain Bashir out uh, uh com- lieutenant commander uh, Thashran, if you could please uh you are brought down to the s- what the locals have called the sludge pump <laughs> it is they a, bottle it that way <laughs> uh, uh, it's located down at the bottom of the uh, slum pile and is not the nicest contraption to be looking at they there is obvious attention to obvious attempts to keep it clean but it does seem to clog up several times um and the water it produces is obviously not as clean as they they would like it to be um, it just appears to be a general corrosion of the systems from all the salt water that it's taking in. And general parts are not, or the the parts are not in good re- repair. Okay, so I will uh, do my best to um, clean it up as well as seeing if I can uh, make it more efficient, um, okay. you know, giving them like some cleaner water at least. Okay, uh, this will be a control plus engineering difficulty of one, please. Okay. If you happen to have a, you know, focus of water filtration systems, this would be perfect. Nope. <laughs> Darn. Water drinking. Water <laughs> drinking. <laughs> uh, engineering. Come right, on, so Scotty. In I the Kelvin know. universe, flew through water. Uh, no focus. You managed to make it. All right. Yep. Uh, you you come up with you uh, using your engineering toolkit, which you never leave home without. Uh, you're able to replace several of the horribly worn parts with a few makeshift uh, pieces that you're able to spot weld into place and galvanize to protect from future rust. You suspect it's not perfect, but their drinking water is going to be much cleaner for the foreseeable future and you receive oh. great pr- uh, the crowd of uh, people and mostly children that are following you at a distance um, cheer and applaud as the uh, first gallon of mostly clear water um, is pumped into a not very clean glass nope. <laughs> what I can one step at a time yeah. yep. first the pump then the dishwasher <laughs> um, Commander Bashir, you are ba- um, um, the mm, the ah, sorry, lost my train of thought for a split second. Back okay. now. Um, the um, Vitars you've been speaking with regales you of how the um, Vitars bring. Uh, Roughly ten children a month or so to the to this settlement, and then just sort of leave. Um, he and by by the end of it, he was like, Commander, there's or Mr. Bashir, there's nothing I I can't ask this diplomatically, but is there anything you can do to take some of these children away to raise them in a better life? Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh. I can't, but I have an idea. Okay. Lieutenant Commander Helsing, um, you brought those transporter emitters, correct? Yes, uh, sir. All right. Um, who's in command? Who's who's left? Who's on the ship? <laughs> Uh, that would, I think, be, uh, that would be probably Lieutenant Commander Knorr, who would not find this whole beach thing to her liking. All right. Lieutenant Commander Knorr, I have a situation. I would like you to replicate a couple hundred common blankets, food, water... I would like them transported down to the my coordinates as the away team 
is transported to the beach. Understood, Commander. It will be done within ten minutes. Thank you. The share out. Would it be well? Okay, so the water filtration thing I've done should be good for quite a long time, right? Foreseeable future, yeah. Okay, I was just wondering if it would be worthwhile trying to uh, quickly teach someone how to make makeshift repairs in case it actually failed. I mean, that's probably a half decent thing. You can do a presence engineering test with a difficulty of zero, just to see how well you do. Okay, let, let me let me try that. Let me, you know, it's better to teach them how to fix it so that um, mm -hmm. anything goes wrong. I think very yeah. jordy of you. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> what he doesn't mention is his uh, methods of interpretive dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very inspiring. Uh, See, I, what I do is I, I turn into a it turn into a Disney musical number, yep. and that way they never forget, and they're very inspired in in doing it and helping themselves. And this turn month. the wrench, turn the wrench, turn. Uh, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. There you go, there you go. Uh -huh. uh, that's enough that's of that. Going with. Okay, yep. that is two extra momentum. Cool. Uh, you <laughs> teach a couple of the individuals well enough that they believe that they can repair it. Uh, you also show them the magic of what is a, a self-sealing stem bolt, which to them is about magic. So yeah, they are. They believe, or you believe that their filtration system is in good hands. Right. Well, that's something at least. Mm -hmm. And the blankets that are being uh, sent down are totally nondescript. God, sir, that's why I said that. The USS yeah. Nighthawk. <laughs> They're yeah. not, you know, yeah. they're not emblazoned That's with Federation or Starfleet. Simples, yeah. <laughs> Just... It's got the Jim Kirk bedspread. <laughs> oh, God. oh, that might be okay. <laughs> Kirk was here. Yeah. He was a lot of places. That's right. Yes, he was. He's the reason there's so many children on this planet. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Giving us kind of space. Hmm. Okay, now the big question is, we're going to go on to the beach. Okay. We leave, leave the armor? Or... I'll go back to the ship. Oh, hey I already guys, ordered I her to go back to the beach. I'm on the beach now. I just have, I just remember that I ordered her yeah. to take us to the beach at the same time the, the supplies are dropped. <laughs> that so is you're, okay. we're going to... Yep. So... How dirty is the Tran? Uh, sorry, how dirty is the what? Is the Tran and Loxley from being oh. in the sump pit? Oh, oh. <laughs> um, he's probably covered up. In, he's probably covered in grime and um, unmentionable substances. Yeah, we need to go to the ship. <laughs> Not everyone has to go to the ship or to the beach. That's a lot of beaming all at once. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, it's the same. You know, they no, it's not. They can send us to a different pad on the ship instead of to the beach. This sounds like a heck of a transporter roll. I'm I'm okay rolling for it if you are, but I'm not. <laughs> I would offer to jump into the water to clean off, but uh, you know, you could just beam him into the ocean. It, yeah, we could do that. It works for me. Okay. Work for you, Shan. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, Might be warm water. <laughs> yeah, you see. I mean, it. I suppose I could. I just cleaned the water filtration thing. Can I just like uh, just clean myself off of that? Sure. I'm off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That ruined the GM's plans with water. Why don't you? I mean, yeah. It's a wet uniform competition now, so yeah. I'll walk it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he rocks it. Okay. And we leave. We take off the uh, the armor. Okay. Uh, you leave it behind, and there are individuals who are more than happy to take this armor and uh, hide it away for if they need it in the future. Yeah, that was uh, my other I point. I was, I was kind of doing that on purpose, but I was going to yeah. tell the captain about that. Anyway. <laughs> as soon as we take it off, it just disappears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, you just take that, you hold that, you're holding the helmet like you know stormtrooper style and you're thinking you set it down it's just gone okay <laughs> every piece just disappears at a time it was the self disintegration self disintegration yeah. module eh, model captain okay 
So, um, if we could have uh, the Chief Zell roll a uh, control plus engineering, the ship can assist with um, sensors plus engineering. Um, with all the beaming around, this is, would have been a difficulty of four. However, there are transport enhancers, which makes it a three. And use it. Home oh, moon. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, I'll I'll do Zell. Um, okay. Control plus engineering. I'll use one momentum. Okay, so the ship assists successfully. Engineering. Three D twenty. Focus. Oh, you um, make it. Hmm. We made it. You did indeed. Okay. Capt okay. Uh, Captain, you're on the beach. Uh, there is the uh, telltale hum of a transporter signal as more of your crew arrive. One of which ah. appears to have come f somehow beamed through an sh active sh rainstorm as your engineer <laughs> is soaking wet. The rest are perfectly fine. Captain, I think you need to have a talk with the with with um with Zell and uh, get some remedial lessons in how to transport us correctly. Crew evaluations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, they'll hear me. Believe me, it'll happen. Yeah. I trust everything went up to spec, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Captain. We got enough information. You could say everything went swimmingly. Is that a joke? I don't know. It, is it? Is it? I, I don't know. Quite the sure. of this. I, I'm not quite sure anymore. These people keep giving me their sarcastic or dry laughter. <laughs> 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 Only in the presence and of the Imperator. And interpreter oh, okay. dance. Okay. And interpreter dance. Yeah, that's the part you need to be concerned about, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> Nighthawk the musical must happen now. Oh, well. Team, we need to get the pattern enhancers back. Well, um, they didn't beam in with them, with the pattern enhancers? Well, th is that how it would work? Um, yeah, I mean, the pattern, I'm sh pretty sure the transport enhancers are transported along with the... Uh, okay, so know, let's come back up with us. So those are with us here on the So beach. those are on the beach, too. Uh, <laughs> you know what? That's what I'm going to use the complication for. The transporter <laughs> enhancers were not transported not. with you. The transport enhancers are still in the settlement. Feels like we're missing something. Yeah. Crew evaluations. So. <sighs> Don't worry, it's going. It's on. It'll be a mark on my record because we lost. I lost the armor on purpose and left <laughs> back. Uh. <laughs> we, we can always well, try to retransport the enhancers. Uh, That's my McCoy leaving my tis tricorder behind on the people. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh, okay. Oh, I think I'm probably incorrect. I think they do stay there. It's been a while. Yeah, unless there is... But, yeah, transport enhancers yeah. are sort of left behind unless specific efforts are made to retrieve them. Right, right. It took... It took I got to jog my memory for a sec. Yeah. So we can just do a second transport to pull them up. You yeah, can. maybe. You could if you wish. That's my recommendation. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're not. <laughs> not <with the> <laughs> on, this, on this place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the said Rose and Nighthawk. Make sure you uh, transport these uh, transport in correctly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you get a chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> Does that need a roll, or is it just going to be automatic? Uh, no, this is going to be a new roll, because quite frankly, I'd want you to fail, because it would All be right. far more hilarious if you did. <clears throat> oh, God. Uh, All right, control and engineering. Yeah, one more set of that, so control engineering. Um, I'm going to dump whatever threat I have left to increase the threat or complication range 17 to 20. So What's the what's the difficulty? Is uh, it still same, uh, same difficulty, difficulty 3. Uh, all right, maybe I'll do the spend the last... Uh, momentum then. Uh, Get one for the ship. He's using all of his threat left. Yeah, use the last step. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
Well, we got you got him. <laughs> we got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Yep. <laughs> Zell, you got some explaining to do. Uh, Zell picked up a you picked up a bit too much extra with those enhancements. Ca um, transport complete, sir. Uh, however, transporting such small objects through whatever interference grid they had, I had to route a lot more power through it. I'm worried they've picked. I'm worried they think something's up, sir. For a second, I thought he might have accidentally um, picked up some kids as well. So did I. I was so <laughs> so That's why I've been dreading. Yeah, I, was, it... oh, uh, was, I, I was. Like, I was biting kid. my nails. And just I was like, tempted. Oh, crap. We got a crap load of kids. I was tempted, <laughs> but. Oh. No, the... We got a togi and a doogie. <laughs> Field okay. trip. All right, so they picked up our. Um, well, the transporter yeah, signals. Well, if that's the case, I'm just going to say, send girl to Brit. I want you to create a pulsed deflector, uh, well, a uh, deflector pulse that matches a similar energy uh, depiction from uh, that transport. But I want it to be masked. If we could uh, do it in, within the same window, maybe they'll think it's something else other than a transport. And we could just explain it away as a malfunction. Or our sensors that are still damaged did some type of weird pulse from the exactly. missile attack. Regardless of it, we need to fake it. Okay. Throw that guilt on him. Uh, so, Vault, uh, let's see. Who is going to be left on the ship? Is uh, Ranny still up there? Ranny, sir. Okay. Uh, this sounds like something that Ranny would run, then. Um, so, this is going to be Daring plus Science. Let's call it a difficulty of two. And the ship can assist with a... Um, nah. Ship can assist with sensors plus science. Okay. Alright, none, none of you kids get to touch Ranny. <laughs> what is this again? What am I rolling here? Uh, sensor science. Or not sensor. Uh, daring daring plus right. science. Daring plus science. Yeah. You sure you don't want any more of my, more of my rolls? <laughs> oh, well, it's not that I don't trust you. It's just that I don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> What difficulty? Uh, difficulty two. Okay. Um, let's go with sensor operations as a focus. Since That'll we're trying work. to fake it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Randy, um, the pulse went off uh, as intended, but it it's too early to tell whether or not it is a success, Captain. In either case, uh, once it is done. Looks like you're starting to get a burn there, sir. A little sunburn? No, that, that, that red in the face is natural. Your, spot, your spots are uh, getting a little dark. Yeah, <laughs> it might be time to either put some sunscreen on or... Call the whole uh, beach thing off and get back to the ship. No, that would just be suspicious. But I do think more suspicious than what's already, what's already taken place. We're out of but here. I do, but I do think it's best for us to start slowly returning. And uh, get yourselves cleaned up. All right. Uh, the Binars are slightly disappointed because, well, their winning streak is over. But they didn't lose any, so that's fine. Do we have to take the transporter back? Well, you'd sort of beamed down to the. Sh <laughs> I was gonna say how. Long... <laughs> as long as Zell's not... well, never mind. This time we'll end up with uh, five kids on the ship. Right. From the uh, for some reason they're just. Yeah. There. Somehow. Somehow he. Uh, you are. Um, transported up as decorum allows. Those that did, those that um showed up last probably get to enjoy this beach as much as possible before they have to go back. And this is pretty much where I was planning on ending the plot, so if does anybody have scenes that they'd like to do for wrap-up? Nah, I don't. <laughs> uh, Zell might get a stern talking to. 
<laughs> right, Einstein. Yeah. Uh, uh, Captain uh, Luxor, or Captain Singral, anything you'd like to do? No, I'm pretty much content here. Okay. At this point, I'm going to let the chips fall as I may. Uh, Commander Bashir? Um, I'm good. I'm going to go uh, get cleaned up and uh, take Togi for a drink. Okay. Take Togi. Hmm. I just want to quickly check something real quick here. Um, as soon as I get to the right set of sheets. Um, so, Liam Helsing, I'm willing to grant you a determination that you can that will be usable next session. Um, if your guilt about the, uh, and I'm going to tap your the greater good balances on a knife's edge. So you get a determination. If you somehow make the Vitars aware of the this hidden colony, make the all the Vitars aware of it, or you know, if you just start me, you know, if you start leaking the information out in some form, be it you know a anonymous communication you know light their uh you know make their colony light up on everyone's uh uh radar f destroy their uh, holographic generator with a targeted f uh phaser fire something along those lines <laughs> uh that's be something a little bit more discreet than that can i give you a couple days to think about it uh sure But I will definitely need to know before the Cerberus game next week. Um, okay, no problem. Okay. Um, the Shran, anything you'd like to do? Um, not, well, not, I'll just be talking to, um, uh, what am I, uh, to Kassad, just, just kind of, uh, picking his brain about what, what it was like, um, in the, uh, was in the palace um, while he was down there. I think it was bringing up the, any cultural significance and stuff there. Uh, he but. uses the terms grandeur and ostentatious a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, I believe that's everyone. And so I'd like to thank my players, and I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Uh, next Friday, uh, so Friday the 23rd, is going to be the next Starbase our Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. And then on the 29th begins the crossover ep episode where the crew of the Nighthawk meet the crew of Cerberus for a fantastic two-parter in, in which chaos will happen at the GM's discretion. And there will be a lot of discretioning. Uh, so from, player, from myself, my players, thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>